Welcome to all the viewers. This broadcast Hello. of the DDVBL the on PTV Channel O and Power FM Special Events is brought to you by HM Mechanical in association with Ada Care, Smart Move Conveyancing and Live Wired Electrical. Ready in a ring, I reckon, Cut. Joining me here for the semi final of DDBBL, Jack Beveridge, captain of the Grammar Blazers. This could be one of the classic uh, commentator moments. Uh, Jack Carter in the background, renowned Tailander, could inside Ed one into our head at any moment. So, living on the edge here, but Zach won the toss and chose to bat. Yeah, yep, uh, wicket's nice and hard, the outfield looks nice and lush and fast. So, yeah, hopefully, we can get some runs on the board and put some pressure on them early. Just for the viewers' sake, there's been a uh, sprinkler leak out here, so we've had a uh, half hour delay to try and get the uh, outfield dry. Um, so runs on the board, important for you guys, though? Yeah, I think so. I think, especially in finals cricket, I think if you can have a bit of yeah something to bowl to, um, I think, you know, hopefully we can get something in excess of 150, and hopefully it'll be enough to yeah, put some pressure on them. So 100, 150 is a target, because in this competition, there's been scores in excess of 180 and beyond. Yeah, well, I think so. And and we, we had a pretty good uh, match here last time. Um, Cole Tonka batted reasonably well and sure. we made 180 something, um, but different conditions, um, different, wicket, different outfield. So yeah, hopefully 150 should should be around the money, but if we can get more, that's a little bonus. Good luck. Thanks very much. Joining me is captain of the Hip Pocket Rockets, Luke Neal. Uh, Luke, you guys lost the toss and have been asked to bowl. What would have you have done anyhow? Yeah, we would have batted, but that's all right. I think um, pitch will play well for the whole game. Yep. and. Um, yeah, we're not too concerned about chasing. What do you think is the target you're going to try and kick them to? I think, yeah, uh, probably 150. I reckon if we can um, kick them there or less, that'll be a win for us. It sounds like a par score. Zach was saying that they're, they're targeting 150 as, as a par for them. What, um, what's going to be the key to you keeping them to 150? Uh, I think it's piling to our plans. We've got probably a couple of longer pockets um, rather than everything short like it um, has been. So. Yep. I think uh, if we bowl all of those areas and yeah, make them hit balls where we want, we go a long way to win. Scored 100 yourself yesterday? Yeah, got a few, so hopefully I'll save a few for today. Form uh, coming into today, congratulations. Um, who's going to be the key to your bowling attack? I think Shorty, obviously, is our spearhead, but um, I think where the game we won with the other guys, really backing him up and um, following in partnerships. Yeah. Awesome, good luck. Cool. Thank, Thank you, mate. Uh, joining me here is. Stephen Fry of Grammar Blazers and Matt Dennis, uh, coaching Super Duo. What uh, you guys want to call selected for Matt? Reason behind that? Runs on the board. Runs on the board makes a lot of sense. What uh, and as far as the target of what you're going to try and get, what do you think? Oh, I don't think we have really got a number in mind, but just looking at what we got here last time, we're at the one, you know, 160, 170. So anywhere there, it's obviously a good something good to, to bowl at um, second. But um, yes, hopefully we can. Place a good tail and put a bit of pressure on the class. Kyle Tonkin is probably due to go a little bit better than 90 off three balls, 120 off off 30 this time, I think. Very good. Well, we'll take it. Back, yeah, back to where it all uh, happened last time. So good positive memories for him anyway. Yeah, beautiful. Good luck, guys. Thanks. Joining me is Matt Donovan, the assistant assistant coach of the Hip Pocket Rockets, aka Coffee Boy. Yes. First and foremost, White with One, thank you very much this morning. No worries. Um, What's the plan here today as the assistant assistant coach? What's what's your input going to be? Oh, I think uh, fielding is going to be key today. Um, definitely uh, let it down in the last couple of weeks on the actual field, taking catches, taking chances, bowling in the right areas. Um, I think that's going to come down to it. It's going to be a very tight game. So. You've uh, you've nailed a few cliches there. Congratulations to you on the Thank you. cricket chat. I'm learning off the assistant coach and the coach. <laughs> what... Um, Will you actually do anything today, other than just be here to be watching? Me? Um, I've fetched a few balls, so I've uh, broken a fingernail, um, and I've got the coffee, so I think I've done my job. Job done. Have yep. a rest. Yeah, that's it. Find one of these seats. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Joined here by Graeme Strang, owner of the Hip Pocket Rockets. Graeme, you could cut the tension with a knife. We've had a delayed start because of the uh, soggy outfield. The boys are keen to go. Uh, hopefully they haven't peaked too early. What's going to be the key? To a rocket's victory. Score more runs than them. Take more wickets than them. Generally, unless we unless we have a uh, weather intervention and a Duckworth yeah. Lewis Stearns result, I think you're probably right there. Um, take Luke Neal out of it. Who's who's your other key? Luke Neal and Blake Anderson. And other than Cam Moody, who's your who's your key man? 
perennial Sean McCarthy, isn't it? Oh, the old dog. Uh, he does what he does. Four uh, overs for 15 runs. Beautiful appealing, umpires Excellent. under pressure. Absolutely. How we do it? Absolutely. Watch the action all day. I'm tipping the lock forward from Brisbane, Lockie Bellicott, to have another big game. His, uh, his big arms whacked a few against Grandma last week. If our, if our top order does what they've been doing, it's game on. Game on. It'd be nice if uh, Blake Anderson put some clothes on, to be honest. I know, but mind you, it's not about Greg. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, mate. Yeah, so interesting morning. Uh, we've turned up to a, a bit of a muddy quagmire. Uh, fought our way through that with a little bit of a delayed start. And away we go at 10.30. So the delayed start is probably one of the best outcomes we can hope for given the circumstances today. It's like a little bit of a lake when we turned up, so the is dissipating pretty quick from the outfield and, and we should be right to go. We thought there was a slight problem when we saw boats and skiers <laughs> on one part of the outfield. <laughs> Special shout out to the member of the public that actually came and uh, and uh, let Angus Rathy know that there was a problem. Um, that's probably uh, quite potentially those actions have saved our game today. Absolutely. I think it, that and the fast action Bathurst performance from Johnny Lee's from Torn, but here in a record time. <laughs> their curator. Oh, we've got Muchies on the move. Yeah, oh. yeah. So just just for those uh, that don't know George, George Casey from uh, from Railways delivering my little snack here. George uh, runs. What's what's the name of your business, George? George's Aircon Cleaning. George's Aircon Cleaning. That's uh, look after George. He's a good kid. Um, speaking of sponsors, we've uh, we've mentioned HM Mechanical, but our other sponsors are Ada Care. Uh, for all your needs in aged care goods. Livewide Electrical. Uh, those Livewide boys have been a big part of the, the cricketing scene in Toowoomba for forever. And of course, how could we not mention... Smart Move Conveyancing. <laughs> uh, providers of our live replay. Um, Justin Shine and the, and the crew at Smart Move Conveyancing. Fantastic. So, seven minutes till play. He'd be the tallest man in conveyancing, wouldn't he? Oh, at, have to be. Have to be. Um, former, former great cricketer and uh, has always been a fantastic golfer. And uh, I'd imagine still partakes out of the golf. Yeah, no, still playing quite well apparently, but uh, one of the world's worst punters apparently. It's oh. not, the guy, not the kind of guy you'll allow into your syndicate. Yeah, okay. But gee, he's got some mates, hasn't he? <laughs> I think the, the bad putting pool is growing. Yep, sure is, sure is. So our umpires today, Angus Rathy and Mick Carmody, uh, stalwarts of Toowoomba Cricket. Those two have been, uh, been some of our top level umpires for for a number of years. Now uh, joining us today in, uh, with today's broadcast is Russell. Um, he's just loving his cricket, here to help today. Fantastic to have someone on board that uh, that wants to be a part of it. Yeah, great, great move, Russell. He's uh, he's loving his role, chasing me around the field, talking to people. He was he was onto it. So, what was the uh, mood amongst the the skippers and team owners there, mate, on the rounds? Yeah, look, fairly jovial. Um, I think uh, I think the warm ups and everything else are all fun and games until until those umpires cross the line, uh, and then then they snap into game mode. There's a lot on the line today, obviously. First step to the title. Yep. Uh, by the end of today's play, we're going to have an outright winner of the DDB BLO. What are we, three or four? Well, 3.5, isn't 3 it? 5. We, we had the COVID cancellation, so um, call it what you will. But, uh, but uh, yeah, culmination of uh, it's only a five week season, but geez, it seems longer, doesn't it? Mate. It's longer for us, and I'm probably <laughs> sure it's another week or two longer for you. I'm pretty, pretty sure the viewers don't really care, but no. feel, it feels like a uh, been going a fair way. No, that's right. I was going to put the Dogwood Dog down. We're caught in the middle of the pitch. Oh, gee. I'll just get rid of the Dogwood Dog then. Yeah, well, well the, the tomato sauce around your mush too, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies for that, viewers. Are we live, Baz? We're back, and the, and the umpires are 
Some would say making a rather gingerly approach to the centre wicket. Well, ginger's fair enough. Angus has put him a few yards this morning, so he's, he's allowed to be a little bit ginger to the crease. Yeah, he has actually. He's pulled out the big ones today. Mowed the field with absolute professionalism. <laughs> um, actually aquaplaned in places <laughs> with the mower. <laughs> we're going to attach the skis to the back of his mower. <laughs> we were at stage. <laughs> Certainly a super sopper. <laughs> When you had your morning workout, Tony, you, uh, yeah, you no. spent uh, an hour on the super sopper? Yeah, I actually a bit disappointed I didn't have my step meter on my phone going because I worked it, we clogged a few up there. So it was interesting, we persisted until we thought we were making no more extra benefit. Well, I, like I said to you at the time, I think it's made plenty, plenty of benefit, plenty of change, even if it was just to the aesthetic to at least um, confuse the umpires. I, know, I must admit though, and at the risk of seeing a little bit biased, but the field looks absolutely first class. Um, and I think a lot of that credit has to go down to Angus's effort this morning. Mm. Yeah, no, when I arrived, in a, if, uh, if everyone can see the outfield, um, it's a little bit uh, little bit fluffy. So Angus Rathy here early this morning mowing the entire field for us. <coughs> with, with nothing much bigger than a victor. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, all right, teams are on their way, so... So we've got cricket conditions are perfect somewhat, so maybe a fraction cool, we've oh, got... I think cool is wonderful. Um, so, obviously grammar, bit of an up and a down sort of a tournament today. Well, both of these teams really, Tony. So, uh, grammar have been win one, lose one. Hip, hip pocket rockets jumped out to two wins, then lost two on the trot. Um, so both, both of them have gone up and down. Um, so it is a little bit of a, a lottery as to who we're going to see win today. Where Who would you go with? Well, it depends who shows up with Grammar. I think if their batting is well orchestrated, they can put a good total on the board. I think they're with a shot. Um, if they don't bat to plan, I think hip pockets will reel them in. Um, you can't discount the X Factor in the hip pocket rockets and that's one Sean McCarthy. Uh, the guy has a way of getting himself into the game with the ball and he did it last week. Um, and I know you can't rely on or shouldn't rely on one player to turn a game but he does have a habit of doing that. Mm. I think you're right. I think maybe if you looked at the uh, Rockets bowling lineup, first ball from McCarthy, Alex Welsh stretches forward and blocks it back down the pitch. Yeah, I think if you look at the uh, the Rockets bowling lineup in isolation, probably not the strongest bowling lineup. But uh, yeah, Sean more than makes up for that, really, doesn't he? Oh, absolutely. Like he, yeah, just that ability to get himself in the game or rise to the occasion when it's needed is something that he does and does regularly. Um, last week's example was it was just another another you know a regular day out for Sean McCarthy. <laughs> Uh, Second ball, down leg side. Oh, is there going to be water streaming out of that? <laughs> first first venture into the lake. Four leg buys. I'd have thought the XL Pies might have come equipped with a super sized beach towel out there today oh, to keep the ball dry. I do have a heap of towels in my car if required. Viewers, if I, uh, if I race off, please don't be offended. It's because I've come into the aid of wet cricket ball. I'd imagine though that the umpires of this stature, the experience these guys have, they probably have got their little first aid kit bag there, <laughs> complete with beach towel, hang tan. Beach towel that folds out from the size of a postage stamp. Edge. Yeah, that's delicately put through the vacant slips region. And Al Shah cuts that off down at the third man boundary. So it's a good positive start from Grandma, just a bit of a wayward delivery first up there with Shawnee, but then finding his line of length and biting the edge. Unfortunately, no one there to catch it. It's interesting, um, no, no, not even one person in the catching position there with the new ball. Oh, that's going to be a wide. Shawnee Uncustomary for Sean, a couple down leg side early on. Yeah, we might have put the commentator's curse on him early on. <laughs> So there's a lot brought in for this game, of course. Obviously a ticket in the grand final today uh, against the Raptors, so obviously a lot to play for. 
on face value you'd have to say Raptors would be uh, easily the favourites being undefeated and these two teams being up and down in their results but T20 cricket's a, a strange game isn't it? Anything can happen. Well it is. I, I, I will say to go along with you, I think Raptors know their game pretty well. Um, they seem to understand what how to play a good 20, T20 game. They've got some good run getters, some aggressive hitters of the ball in their top order and their bowling attack has proven to be quite quite uh, hard to score against. <coughs> but uh, finals do funny things to teams, don't they? Four runs. So this turns it on its head a little, a little bit. Um, the great Sean McCarthy and to be honest they haven't blazed him away but um, 11 runs off this over already um, so this is a fantastic start for, for the Grammar Blazers it's a good start isn't it just uh, just get yourself to that the little ray of sunshine from northern England Alex Welsh just uh, mm. nerdling at 10 and over at the moment with two balls left in this over mm, and two sick knees Two crook knees. I think well she's got fairly heavily strapped knees here in the warm up. End of the over. None for 12. Great start for the Grimmer Blazers. Very good cricket. So the start definitely Grimmer would have liked. So it seems to be par in the uh, in this power play has been sort of 45 50. So obviously Grimmer well and truly on target to reach that. Got Ryan Pappenhausen coming on to bowl. A little man with a moustache, Matt Hallis. Oh, okay. He got a release from the Eels, did he? <laughs> Melbourne, isn't he? Oh, Melbourne Storm, sorry, yes, you're right. Dating Ariane Titmus. He's done for a guy with a terrible moustache and a horrible uh, barnet on him, he's done well. Well, we always thought Ariana might need glasses. <laughs> Sponsored by Specsavers. <laughs> Well, good on the Pappenhausen. So, Matty Hallis, who hasn't bowled a lot in club cricket today, seems to be holding himself back. Saving to himself. Yeah. Hallis in the bowl. Right leg, left leg, quick succession. Arms everywhere. <laughs> oh, fair to say, Matty Hallis has got a, a, actually quite a nice action. Has, um, been known to have a regular uh, sort of bruised heel on his front foot. Yeah, right. Uh, he has been complaining <laughs> of a late. Yeah, it's something Is that, that when he digs it in? Yeah, apparently so. <laughs> Would you think that he actually lands heavy on his front foot? Well, if you're doing your job as a fast bowler, you should be. Yeah, he's certainly got good leg extension. He hits the crease hard, I suppose. And 45 kilos ringing wet, I wouldn't thought it'd be that bad on his heel. Fairly good point. <laughs> Seems to come and go a little bit, but Russell's just giving us a thumbs up from the uh, from the camera. He's happy with the way things are going there. Russ ensuring that the show runs ultra smoothly today. Mm. Mm. I tell you what, that uh, that straight on camera angle looks fantastic. Isn't it good to watch cricket like that? I'd rather watch the TV. I think. <laughs> Hallis, in he comes to Alex Welsh. Uh, Welsh goes for the quick single. Oh, gee, the. They did pick the right end. Or th that must have. Th that would have been close. That would have been close. Smart move, convincing replay tone. How many times? Here's a little, uh, little thing for our viewers. Send us in a. How many times we will mention smart move, convincing finance over the next two games. Um, that will entitle you to a weekend on the houseboat with Barry. Don't forget the fuel motors, Barry. Hopefully the sprinklers don't come on. Tooley's first ball, lead by. Mm. Three for the single, so. So certainly no boundary off the over yet. No, no, start from uh, Mighty Matt Hallis. I haven't seen uh, Mr and Mrs Hallis in the crowd yet today. Oh, I no. think they'd be directly south of us. Surely they haven't given up on him. 
under the tree. Harris into Welsh. Oh. Little inside edge. No run. A lot happening. Um, so, good length from Matt Hallis here, isn't he? He's been yeah. very, very full. Absolutely. No, he's, he looks the goods, actually, um, at the moment. Matty, he seems to... Matty Pappenhausen? Not, uh, well, the certain moustache is not getting in the way of his bowling, actually. <laughs> not yet, anyway. He's got a bit of work enough. on it to get to the DK Lily stage. Although, to be fair, for a fair-haired gentleman, um, being able to see it here from the boundary, uh, he's done better than a few. Do you think he's got a clipper? Is a bit of a mud. Is it a trim? Do you think? Oh, I think he would be scaping. Yeah, scaping for sure. All right, that is the over. Uh, none for fourteen. So good comeback there from the hip pocket rockets to. Over. Um, oh, Shawnee, be, I'm just going to say this now. Beware of the uh, McCarthy. I think that first over he'll be pissed off. him up a bit. Absolutely. Did you just say pissed off? <laughs> 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 Oh, my apologies, <laughs> viewers. It was not happy, I think, we could translate into. Well, the opposite of disgruntled. Yeah. Or the opposite of grumpled. He'd be disgruntled. He's not happy. <laughs> let's, just, uh, let's just leave it at that. I've got to remember you actually talking to a microphone. Yeah? <laughs> my apologies all around. And possibly, I'd say, probably 40,000, 50,000 viewers. Oh, at least. McCarthy straight back on it now. I heard that Channel 9 interested in the contract out, of course. <laughs> contract out, <laughs> honest. Honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, they'll probably put the contract out on Barry because uh, he's such a threat. Yes. Oh. Yeah, okay. All right, right. McCarthy. McCarthy uh, I doubt he's ever been to the Leeburn Sprints. But in he comes. Short ball oh. doesn't get up. Oh, here it is. Well, scampers through for the single until he gets through the other end quite comfortably. Um, for all the hoo ha, uh, Rex Tooley hasn't exactly lit up this tournament, has he? Well, promises a bit to. Oh, I haven't seen a lot of him play. Don't know a lot about him. Oh, he, he, he goes off. He, he's uh, it's capable of scoring a lot of runs really quickly and has done for. Queensland underage teams and, and Grammar first 11. Welsh driving through the gap. Um, will that make the boundary? Yes, it does. Four yeah, it's a good chase. Good effort from Luke Neal down on the boundary there, but unfortunately for that's him, not, the that's not going to help Sean McCarthy's mood, is it, Tony? No, it isn't. How will he be feeling? Absolutely annoyed. <laughs> Rather peeved. Now the viewers, uh, the viewers would be more than interested to know how the welfare of Mabel the cow is. Um, so Tony actually sent me a picture last night uh, of Mabel, uh, droopy ear, but I, I really like it. I think that's got a little bit of a puppy dog sort of a flavour to it. Um, she wasn't being very phonogenic at the time. <laughs> Slower ball by McCarthy, uh, full. Oh and through cover again for four runs. So that'll be the last time I'll compliment Sean McCarthy today. <laughs> Kiss of death. Apologise to Sean. None for 23 off 2.4 overs by my calculations if the uh, hamsters at my cricketer are in agreement with me. Interestingly enough though, this, this could have a bit of an impact on how the other guys have to perform the ball today. Oh, this is down the ground by Alex, Alex Welsh. Bit of a chase down there, pulled up and saw the boundary. That might be the first three of scenes scored in this competition this year. Obviously, we've left the boundaries too deep. Clear no. time. Yesterday, uh, obviously, Highfield Sports Park had a match on it. Uh, who played here yesterday, Tone? Uh, the railway. Michael's Railway Bulldogs versus the, the uh, Northern Brothers Diggers. Low score match. A grade. A grade. I think uh, Railways were bowled out from 162. And unfortunately, the Diggers are unable to get it. I think they fell six or seven runs short. So, very Sounds similar. Like a good game. Tight game, I think um, Flurry wickets at the end in both ends. 
So after three overs of uh, Grammar Blazers innings, none for 27, chortling along at uh, nine per over, doing really quite well. I've really got a compliment for the vision here today. That view of the pitch from that nice, angle isn't is it? really good. Yeah. Really good. It looks almost white out there. Hmm. Um, so, good start to the season for the uh, the Blessed Bulldogs, Tony. Absolutely, I think. It is, the, I must admit, at the moment, spirits are high because it's been a long time since since the club and all the, the A-grade guys have experienced that sort of start of the season. Hallis into Welsh. Welsh wonders it. You hit cover, no run. You hit that cleanly. Yeah, right, so good vibes around uh, around the A-grade crew at the uh, moment? Yeah, there is. I think they've just got to keep their feet on the ground, which I think they're doing. You know, they realise that there's a lot of things that they have to improve on still. Um, the, uh, yeah, I'd say the front bar at the Royal has been quite, uh, quite entertaining the last two Saturday nights. Welsh just hits that one straight to mid-off, no run. So a couple of dot balls here from Hallis. Um, in what is a bit of a turn up for the books uh, he's pretty much the lone ranger of the bowling attack at the moment Sean McCarthy's gone for uh, a fair few runs probably 23 or so off his two overs and Matt Hallis bowling a really good length so a little bit of a role reversal for the Westerners I, uh, I quick a Yorker there it's interesting I'd, given the, the start Sean has had whether or not he decides to refrain from bowling next smart move can make some replay there Shows that he grabbed on one knee from Brandon Walker, Brandon the wicket keeper. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Normally they'd go uh, three in the power play for Sean McCarthy, but no. Well, it'll be interesting to see if they they give him another over. Uh, Luke Neal, he's captain at this level and club level for West. Palace into Welsh. Welsh plunders it again, but no, no run. In fairness, he's a bit frustrated. He's had two cracking drives and just not been able to break the circle, so it be causing him to rethink his course of action here. It's uh, it's tough, isn't it, when you when you're whacking drives hard and uh, you just can't get it through. Mm. Obviously, uh, Hallis is lined nice and full and straight, and, and not giving Alex Welsh any width. And he comes for the fifth ball, Same. and another dot ball too, mid off. So that's five dot balls here. Tony, Absolutely. back in the day when you had the locks flowing out the back of the white helmet with no grill, um, when you were playing what would have been revolutionary one day cricket, after five dot balls, what, what would have you have done? Thrown the, <laughs> cleared the front leg and probably lost them the stumps. <laughs> All right, let's see what happens here. Here we go. Oh, well bowled, Matt Hallison. Oh. That's, that's unlucky, that's a really good over. Uh, ball squeezed out by Welsh for two, but still only two off it. <coughs> Probably deserved a maiden from that, but uh, not a bad job at all. Great over, great comeback for hip pocket there. Uh, so none for 29 after four overs. Yeah, we're just looking to see what's happening at the, the far end. Uh, yes, there is a bowling change, and I do believe it looks like Luke Neal is taking the option to bowl himself. So well, that that's solid captaincy, isn't it? Because, you know, Sean's not had, had a day, so it's not going to be hard for Luke to shine, is it? No, or well maybe just that little bit, little bit of pace off bowling mm. too. Mm. Luke might, might offer a bit of a challenge for this match. Nerdle a few at, uh, at Rex Tooley here. Uh, I think if you offered um, Grandma Blazers none for 29 off four, I reckon they would have taken that for a start, don't you think? Absolutely. All right, Luke so Neal, right arm over, coming into Rex Tooley. Tooley just leans on it to the straightish mid wicket. So, young Rex is still going to school, I take it? Yeah, I think he's in grade 12 at the moment, so finishing up soon. Okay. So, he's playing obviously for Grammar. Um, well, no, he's, I think he's finished his playing days oh, with okay. Grammar now because obviously he'll be finished when yes, GPS right. season starts yeah. next year. No, he's, uh, he's been playing. Off he goes, straight over mid on. It's a nice Four shot. runs to Rex. So who's he been playing for in the club? He's yeah. playing uh, second grade for West down in Brisbane. Okay. Um, I believe he's made his first grade debut. I could be wrong. 
Um, but yeah, so another another line of Toowoomba players that have gone to play for uh, for West in Brisbane. Yeah, that's uh, a pretty good breeding ground for West, haven't they? From little local talent. Yep, yep. They should probably uh, start helping us develop our facilities or something. Bang. Square drive there from Rex Tooley out to the deep Regan Lipke field. One bounce in. Regan Lipke, um, pretty fine fielder. He goes all right uh, wherever he feels, to be honest. Um, good strong arm, good catcher. Uh, the armrest on, on Barry's camp chair just failed me. I almost fell off my, my seat. Luke Neal into Alex Welsh. Welsh just plays across it and drags it to the... I don't know, what, what position do we call Cameron Moody? Is that a mid-wicket or is it a... Oh, I guess a straight, it is. Straight mid-wicket and a straight yeah. mid-wicket. Yeah. So you've got your forward square. Yeah, I suppose he's a straight mid-wicket. It's like the opposite of extra cover, isn't it? Neil to Welsh, Welsh. Cameron Moody misfields. Doesn't cost him any runs. So... See Grandma going about their business here. I've set the tone early. And uh, caught, I'd say, the hip pockets on their heels a little bit here. Yeah, I think the next next over and a bit are going to be important. The, the last couple, the last eight balls of the power play. Um, you know, if they lose a wicket here, it might cost them. Uh, but if they can continue on their merry way and get another... 10 15 runs then it's pretty much job done for the power play so Luke uh, Luke Neil's done a good job come on straight away and and uh, slowed the run rate down from his end it's difficult isn't it well you're the batsman that's free flowing and you're wanting the ball to come on and you haven't got that ball there traveling at the same pace you've got to adjust your game and uh, some the really good players pick it up very quickly and some of us just take that bit longer. <laughs> um, tell you what, hasn't uh, my cricket and play HQ just been a seamless interaction between each other since uh, the start of this season? Oh, you call pretty constant freezes. <laughs> Freezing and Freezing. not being able to work out who's playing. And you call that, you know, seamless. And, and the scores being uh, at least six hours late. Yeah, no, not no, bad. Seamless, I mean. Well, yesterday I had the, uh, the fortunate experience of following the app for the uh, <laughs> Railways Diggers game, and at one stage, and you right at the end, the Diggers batting lineup ended up going back to none for 14. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. It was about seven down or something, and uh, all of a sudden they were none for, her and yeah, no, it's all worked really well. And they had, it was interesting, though, know, they had none for 14, but they had the full batting card. Mm. The bottom, so mm. Yeah, no, it made perfect sense. Um, you know, we were offered. Oh, how's bowling well? Pads, isn't it? Tell you what, I think Rex was well and truly out there at that hit. Um, yeah, we were offered. No, that's not Rex. That was Alex Welsh. We were offered the opportunity to seamlessly integrate with Play HQ at the start of the DDBBL this season, and politely declined. Um, so I'm just going to give us a big pat on the back. Well, we haven't seemed to have the same issues that we've had on. Just, time. just dirty old my cricket doing its thing. Uh, much, much better than what we've been getting out of club cricket recently. So, another good delivery from Matt. Matt's figures would be rather handy here, I'd have thought. Yeah, Hallis is doing uh, well. He hasn't gone for many runs at all. I reckon he's probably none for six or something like that. Uh, oh, none for three might be. Yeah, That's none for three. Good. Yeah, no, he's, he's bowling a treat. Wow, what a day here at sunny Highfield Sports Park, home of Railway Bulldogs. Oh, oh well, it's just scything that away over point. Uh, Alison Gardner down there with the camera. Uh, she might... You keep an eye on Alice and she might disappear to the swamp if she's not coming around. <laughs> Need to station a lifeguard out there. We might, yeah, just uh, someone might have to throw a buoyancy vest or, <laughs> just as she moves around this way. <laughs> Barry might have to get his shirt off and go all David Hasselhoff. Yeah, Slow motion. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's not even a nice thought. <laughs> uh, 
accept there that nine. Alice on his way into Alex Welsh. Oh, Welsh driving yeah. straight. Emerald Shah chasing hard. Hamal slide pick up. Well done. That's good cricket. Two runs to Welsh. Well fielded by Hamal Shah. Um, speaking speaking of, you know, as much as I was disgruntled with what was happening with my cricket, at least your teams are scoring uh, on the on the live cricket app. I try to support university where I can, being a university old boy, but you can't keep up with them. No one does any live scoring. One bounce to mid-off, no run there to Welsh. Well, hopefully they'll master that shortly. Well, I don't, I don't know if it's high on the radar. I find it pretty frustrating that you want to uh, you want to support your, your old club, but you can't do it. Yeah. No, it's, I know it's handy when, you, obviously, you can't make all games. Um, and it's just nice to know what's going on, unless you've got a trusted source at the field that you can reliably text. I like source. Yeah, I'm sure you do. Like my new or my kitchen rules. <laughs> he likes his sauce. I like sauce. Um, have I told you about Jack Carter and how scary he is today? Really? <laughs> has he put has he got a five day growth happening? <laughs> no, no. Just uh, just so I'd bring out that story about when I had to Talk to him at Schaefer Shield that year. You, one of your your favourites, Jack. Luke Neal Ooh. off pace, man like out in the deep. Sort of, that was like a oh, oh bad yeah. misfield. That's going to cost. That's uh, that's pretty poor fielding out there, to be honest. That was like a one knee axe swing sort of cross back flat back hit but very effective and very must have spun at the last minute and you've got some turn on it with the back yet again hand. Barry's camp chair has failed me and I've almost fallen out the marquee um, I must admit though Barry <laughs> compliment to you today we haven't got the wind <laughs> issues no. like we've had in the past today the setup's pretty much spot on I think for the wind direction yeah, it must be good through the mic we're not getting that feedback today <laughs> The so like tones. Tracy hasn't really shown up today, <laughs> so that's good. There's time. Yeah. I'm not ruining Barry's chairs, they just keep failing. Every time I lean my arm on the armrest, which generally armrests are made for resting your arm on, it collapses and, and I almost topple over. Luck, lucky, luckily, being uh, thin and athletic, I, I can stabilise myself and, and not fall over. <laughs> well, we could do, but can we have a stretcher and some first aid supplies here just in case? <laughs> and we might need a bit of a drill set, a bit of a bit of tools here to fix it up on the run. Do we? Plenty of tools here. Rex, <laughs> here he goes. Big fella just swatting that away. So Six runs to Rex Tooley. Helped himself to that, hasn't he? That was just an absolute swat. I think he was just waiting for Luke Neal to... Uh, to come at him at, at uh, instead of bowling off pace balls, give him a, an on pace ball and swat. Not a lot of uh, technique. Not a lot of technique required when you got hands that quick, really. No, absolutely. That's that's good cricket. Um, that's T20 cricket for you, isn't it? Yeah, unconventional, but effective. Hmm. Neil into Rex off pace. Should be more cricketers called Rex, I reckon. Love that name. Yeah, it's a bit Ivan come across a wreck cricketer before, didn't he? Um, so when uh, when we're out doing the captains and uh, officials interviews, uh, cameraman Russell asked me if I was a DC Marvel Star Wars fan, for which, yes, those that know me would would say yes I am, and I'm a big, big Batman, big Star Wars fan, so DC especially, Lucasfilm as well, but, uh, but Russell let me know that he was a Marvel fan. Um, I didn't get a chance to tell Russell, but uh, I've actually got a Marvel sticker on my cricket bat. Um, I've, I've got the positive nod from him. He's very happy about that. Um, Are you sponsor? <laughs> no, not at all. I'm, You're I'm waiting for that check, eh? I would love a uh, I would love a Batman sticker on my bat. I'm getting a new bat today, so I might um, might have to chuck a Batman sticker on. Although. My bat tends to be the uh, Toowoomba Blue Dog Sports demo bat for everyone to try out and use. Um, 
So uh, I should probably just keep it pure and simple for the for the good folk at Blue Dog Sports. Shout out to uh, Councillor Chris and the, the crew. Um, love my uh, my Blue Dog cricket gear. All right, change of bowling. So power play is one over done. Um, the man with the best bandy legs in the business, Hamal Shah, coming on. Um, yeah, just, just having his effect where he wants his field placements. Actually, speaking of Chris Willow, I've got to talk to him about some bats. I did start texting him. I might actually steal a couple today. Yeah, I think we've got, uh, got a couple there. So, quick single. We're going to look for the two. No, they'd be game on Matty Hellis's arm. He's a... Uh, with quite a rocket arm. He has the habit of running people out direct from the outfield more regularly than anyone else, I reckon. He's, uh, yeah, he's got a habit of that. A bit of, a, bit of an ace in the pack with his fielding. A little mighty moustache. Over. Now yeah, that's going down to add into the Kubi. Add into the puddles. Probably not quite Lake Kubi. We're a little bit south of Kubi. Okay. Lake Annan. Lake Highfield. Um, so, so we should probably uh, get to the leading run scorers, leading wicket takers. So um, it's going to be presented tonight. But uh, those that don't know, the leading run scorer, leading wicket taker. Oh, sweep shot there from Welsh. That's, That's a great, great shot. shot. Great shot, Welshy. Sweeping over the man at... Uh, Somewhat smart move conveyancing replay Tony smart move conveyancing replay number 3 Welsh just lifts it enough over the man yeah, it just helped it along its way around the corner didn't he got plenty on it alright so this is a really good start uh, oh golly I've added one too yeah, many sixes in the score absolutely yeah it's really blown out there for a second isn't it? <laughs> um, we've got uh, Anal Shah coming in for his fourth ball he's already gone for a few runs so What's he going to do here? Do you flight him up? Do you spear him in? He's going with flight. Welsh is under it. It's high. It is long. Six runs. A great shot. Now, clearly, this pitch is playing fairly well out there. The batsmen are quite settled and haven't looked really troubled in their innings today. Not at all. Um, Reminiscent of a young Tony Anderson with the, the bat. Imagine if you'd, back in your day, instead of having to use the toothpicks that you had to use, imagine if you had the bats that they've got now, the small boundaries, you just would have been rampant. I might have scored a couple more. <laughs> but then a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of the times I found myself getting out and it wasn't due to boundary salts. Alex Welsh, 43 off 32. Rex Tooley, 21 off 14. Um, oh. Shah spears that in. Yeah, that was a that was Libke misfields after I've given him a uh, oh no good save from McCarthy throws into the stumps that plays complete a few yeah. jitters out there with the hip pocket yeah. yeah just not a little bit nervy yeah, maybe a little bit big game the half hour delay maybe that got in their head yeah. unlike Hallis Hallis didn't maybe fall the fact it. that they didn't have the right number of red chairs for their team <laughs> didn't know Oh, hesitation. Oh, Libke lets it go, but is uh, is Regan Libke going to get the message down there that he might be a little bit deep two in a row? So, yes, no, maybe. I was almost sorry, sir, but... Uh, Five paces in would help him. Rex gets through. So that's, um, that's a pretty expensive over there for Hanal Shah. Yeah, Matt, who normally is bowling very economical. Yeah, just... Uh, one over for 17. So, so far, Sean McCarthy, two overs for 21, very unlike him. Matt, the moustache, Hallis, three overs, none for nine. Luke Neal, two overs for 20, and Shah, one over for 17. So, you take away Matt Hallis there, and uh, that's carnage. That's more than 10 runs and over for every other bowler. Yeah, it's quite a oh, statement, isn't and it? And there's Phil Hallis. Yeah, no, with his cup, he's got the enamel cup. He's and, uh, obviously camped overnight, <laughs> tried to be first on ground. He's run a couple of drinks, probably a bit of electrolyte to young Matt there, I'd say. A single to Tooley. Eight. 75 off 8.1. So if we're playing junior cricket, Hamill Sharp on the junior cricket rules, wouldn't get a bowl again. Really? Yeah, well, the juniors, if that happens, you just don't bowl again. <laughs> Ever. Ever. <laughs> so, do they bowl Hamill 
again and back him into well here's the question because they're not flush for bowling debt Blake Anderson can uh, oh, this is Lockie Velicott having yeah. a trundle too Lockie bowled well last week had a had a quite the game he was brutal with the stick got some whackers um, when we look at the the batting lineup Blake Anderson Yes, yeah, so I'm just trying to think of bowling options here, so. Yeah, there's sort of, um, I see what you're Short ball, oh, up and it. over. Uh, Rex Tooley never, ever looked in danger there. That was complete control. Um, yes. Fantastic shot. That was a good shot. He wasn't, yeah, just no one out in the deep can run with it. Just up and over point. Yep. Give it plenty. Russell's just moved the camera back in the shade. I think he might have been a bit, a bit worried about the sun earlier on but all under control now for the big fella in comes Lockie Velicott the lock forward Actually, from Brisbane West Brisbane I think he plays for quite appreciative Russell bringing the camera back actually because uh, I'll get a chance to we can actually see day. see yeah. the field now yeah, thanks thanks Russ scores done for 80 off 8.4 uh, things are looking really healthy for Grandma Blazers I think uh, it's a bonus that uh, Alex Welsh is scoring it maybe 175 or thereabouts um, but the fact that Rex Tooley has been under no pressure to, to go hard at anything here he is just dropping it down through oh. third man clever shot if he gets two from this yeah. well fielded for Matty Hallis there he did actually cut the two off oh, we've got an arm injury here to Hallis holding a shoulder stage two not good if he had a shoulder in a foot oh, almost gave them 800 and one a good total. <laughs> Very competitive in a T20 environment. I think if Grandma were to sit there and well, last night going through diligently analysing their, mm -hmm. the game. As you do on a Saturday evening. Ab absolutely, particularly up there in the oh, probably in the food hall. <laughs> um, I would have thought the guys would have, couldn't have thought of anything better than what they've got here today. Yep. Um, none for 81. 82. Off 82 nine. off nine overs. I mean that's a fantastic display of batting. So, had to make a statement, had, had done that. So, obviously we're not halfway yet, but we've Come got out. the opportunity to Earned put himself a second over. over. Might have, might have sweet-talked Luke Neal with the promise of a improved effort this over. Well, he would do his chances of bowling a third no harm if you took a wicket this over is this legal is matt hallis allowed to drink from the enamel cup could well, there be a that. could there be a we might have to herbal drink. brew in there to fix a sore, sore shoulder yeah, i think we might have to call in the stewards and look at a drug <laughs> test there what sort of substances is take it to the take it to the ddbbl management committee yeah. there's a bit of consultation going on there just father-son combo it's truth i've destroyed the uh the runs what have i done here apologies to the viewers and been all over the shop with my uh in fairness you've got a lot going on over there i've been in that seat and uh i don't do as good as you i'm i'm basically i've just i've spent the morning spraying my cricket play hq and uh what have i done oh short ball cut away through mal certainly got a hand on it out there only a single He's certainly opting for the into the wicket style of bowling now. Yeah, interesting. I'm not sure about that. Obviously not wanting to allow the batsman to get up and under. Did your armrest just fail on you, Tony? It, it, it creaked just a bit. I was just mm -hmm. wondering whether... Are these the $2 chairs or the $5 chairs? The $2 if chairs. You, Barry, if you're going to get us back in the commentary box next year, we expect... Uh, I want a recliner. Actually, you may as well just have me on an care mobility scooter. So then when I want to go over to the, the stands, I can just... That's in the air. Hallis is under it. Yeah, that's yeah, that pretty well done there. Fantastic effort there. Did, you, did that get caught by Russell? Russell, did you catch that? Smart move, conveyancing replay. Watch this. This is actually a quite a, a high level of skill. And Russell. Russell, the cameraman. Russell, that is a fantastic effort. That's three seasons of DDBBL packaged into that moment that has sealed that, the deal russell that is as good oh oh really Yuki! that is a fantastic piece of camera work 
to see that. Now that was to, for, for Matty to uh, have the presence of mind to throw that at Cameron Moody's direction. Once again, oh, yes, oh, we look, do. Can, we can. This, this, should, again. this should be the PTV Channel O. Every time you talk sport, this is what you want to have on your capture package. Oh, what do you think was going through Cameron's mind when he did? He, he actually lollied the first grade. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I've just stuffed this up. <laughs> Oh, and that was a bit of pressure on him to grab it the second time. Yeah, and not slide over. That would have been yeah. disaster. Um, all right, so well, that, the boys from Hip Pocket Rocket strike a blow, taking their first wicket. Um, one for 84 off 9.2 overs. New batsman to the crease. Looks like Zachary Beveridge, not Bickle. Yes, so it is. I did, a beverage? did an interview with Zachary earlier on and once again almost called him Bickle. I think it's unfair to have Ooh. two Zachs and a surname starting with B. Uh, I think for common sense purposes, one of those two should change their name. Just for the greater good of the community. Just for my ease of my no, okay. country. So Hamel Shah are opting for some pretty flat trajectory bowling here. Great. Great decision by Luke Neal to keep him bowling. Or was it just poor <laughs> execution of the, <laughs> of the shot from Alex Walsh? Just not to get it right over, poor bugger. <laughs> um, and we have opted for the slightly larger boundary going with yesterday's boundaries. We didn't bring them in, so. Oh, it's through the gap there. Cut Zach, away. So he's directly opened his account. Two runs there, well run. So 87? Yeah. Yep, 87. 13 short of 100. All right, something's about to happen. I say it every time and nothing ever happens. Um, my cricket's just gone down. Well, what a surprise. Recalibrating. I've booted the server. You've done control alt delete. You've delete the app. You've reapplied it to your phone. Turn, turned it off, turned it on. You've done all that. Yep, we're back. So, Alex Welsh, 47 off 37. Well done to him. Um, well, that was a great knock. Especially when you are the leading wicket taker and you can come out and, and whack 47 off 37 as well. Um, that's a man in form really, isn't it? No, oh, yeah, no. When you think about his contribution to the grammar side, it's been phenomenal really. Yep, yep. Um, Brother-in-law to the Wilson brothers that own Blue Dog Sports, so... He'd have to be very high in the reckoning for player of the tournament. Wouldn't they just love to be giving their brother-in-law the 12-month the, uh, Blue Dog Sports sponsorship? Loggy Bellicott, right arm over, into Rex. Just a very, very measured Rex at the moment. One run down to Long On. Rex seems to know his role out here. He hasn't showed... Like, he seems to be playing within himself. He hasn't showed any recklessness, really. He's been fairly calculated in the risk he's taken. Maybe uh, coach Matthew Dennis said, Rex, don't be so reckless. Maybe. Rexless. <laughs> Lucky Bellicott, arms strapped in. In he comes. Zach Beverage just plugging it past him for a single. Much to the light of his grammar teammates applauding. One for 89 of 10.2. So we've got Bellicott. Here he comes. Rex just oh. dropped the back foot out. He was going that there right from the start. He's a clean hit, isn't he? That fielder didn't have far to go. It's pretty it's fair to say, you only had to move from one boundary marker to the next. Pretty clever. If we could get a smart move conveyancing replay on that, I'd love it because you just watch Rex just drop his foot out. No, the uh, smart move conveyancing logo was still just there as he did it. But he shifted his back foot just to allow himself a little bit of space to whip through it. Really, uh, really intelligent batting. And he got his bottom hand through that, just yep. snapped it through the shot, didn't he? Yep. And then more conventional cover drive there. Luke Neal pings it back in at the stumps. I wouldn't say, look, he's got good strong wrists. He, I wouldn't say he's subconscious style wrists, but he's got good wrists. Mm. He's actually, um, gives him power. As, as young men do 
at, at around about that age he's gotten a lot leaner taller and stronger probably in the last 12 months um, he used to be a bit more stockier than that um, so obviously been in the gym or, or looking after himself but just changed his body shape a bit wow that's that cool. is a wonderful shot now that's clever so that's a whip but well it's just left of mid on but yeah no one had a chance that is uh, that's an awesome shot yeah, plenty of bottom hand but he just snapped it through there got that power and the bandy was no problem so rex is obviously taking the lead role here as you'd expect yeah he was happy just to play second fiddle when welsh was going and now he's uh, obviously gotten into it a little bit more now that the the new batsman beverage is out there and so one for 100 off 11 overs really healthy situation here for the grammar blazers if um if the boys from hip pocket don't snap into action shortly could well be chasing a uh, a 200 plusser absolutely like there's still a little bit of firepower to come isn't there from the grammar side we've got to see kyle Tompkin yet and Kyle please. have happy memories here. Yes, no, his last outing he was quite impressive, wasn't it? Beastly. Uh, and once again he was quite quite conservative in his start too, but uh geez he got motoring, once he got going he just kept plugging them long and strong. Now just drops drops one in flat and quick. Single to Rex. I've got a funny feeling with Rex on strike at the far end. We're in trouble here. There's a lot of um Yeah, concrete position. Is that sack on strike, mate? No, no, Rex was just hitting the ball in his direction yes. that last time. Right, right. But when he's on strike, mm. yeah, I believe we are in trouble. There's a lot of ones in our scoreboard at the moment, Tony. One for 101 off 11.1. Um, oh. I like it so much that I don't think I'll even bother changing the scoreboard for the rest of the innings. Yeah, it would have been funny if it was one 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 off 11.1 mm -hmm. big gap stagger patrolling the boundary here now gab was the other one i was trying to think of too that's got the power up front for the rockets so yeah he's be called uh, on to do his thing today down at down in uh, gatton he went silly with a slippery uh, slippery 50 down there so hamel shah continuing here Oh, Zach, a little bit of agricultural coming in there. but Well, um, he does have a small farming plot down near Nobby there. Around about 11 acres, I hear. Oh, right, yeah. So he's agriculture his thing. Yeah, absolutely. And now, just practicing spinning the ball. <laughs> Slows it up. Beverage just submits on it. Only a single there. Um, easy to say from here, but I think he probably could have done a bit more with that young Zachary. All right, Tone. Rex on strike. Um, I'd say Russell's going to have to protect Barry taking the catch. He could be called into sacrifice. Be ready, Russell. Russell. Eyes up, big fella. Shah, round the wicket to Rex. Flattens it out, oh, and Rex clubs drops down on the back club. knee. Clubs it like a seal. Beverage coming back for the two. Um, I can't quite see a smart move convincing replay. This is great. Can we see what happened out on the boundary? I hope hope no one's drowned. Who's that out there with the snorkel on? Little Lukey Neal. Definitely don't want to lose Luke in the in the pond. He'll be critical to uh, to hit pockets chances. So. Hope he doesn't get bogged out there. So, end of the 12th over. One for 106. Things have just slowed down a fraction. Um, change in bowling. Blake Anderson with his right arm low slinging off spin. Um, Rex, 46 off 29. One blow and he could be into his 50s, Zach Beveridge 5 off 6, just nerdling them around so far. 
Um, looking at the bowling figures, Sean McCarthy, two overs, none for 21. Matt the Moustache, Hallis, three overs, none for nine. Anderson, the beverage down the ground. Rex didn't get out of the, the traps quick enough to look at the second. Luke Neal, two overs for 20, none for. Amal Shah, three overs, one for 28. Lockie Bellicott, two overs, none for 21. So once again, take out Matt Hallis and just about all of the hip pocket rockets bowlers have uh, gone the journey. Rex just Which stands up on that. Ooh. We are looking at 180, 200 type tote. I'd just pray if they can keep it up. Like Jeez, that. I do like uh, Lockie Bellicott as a fielder. Yeah, just whip. They knew they couldn't take a, uh, an extra run on that arm because it was going to be in over the stumps. 108 off 12.2. Anderson, Beveridge, Cam Moody cuts off any chance of a second run. And my bloody armrest fell over again. Almost fallen out of the tent yet again. All right, Anderson. In he comes to Tui. Russell liked it. Russell liked it. Yeah, Russell did like that. It was a pretty good. I'll tell you what, I'd be, uh, I'd be prepared to take on some Cameron duties if Russell wants to get into the com box. Anderson to Tui. Oh, Tui that slaps that, that hard. Jeez, hit that hard. And that's career. That's. I mean. That's 50 runs for Rex. Smart move, convincing replay. Look at the power. He gets out of that. Snaps his wrist through this. Just cracking shot, isn't it? 50 to Rex. Well batted, Rex. About time, I think. You have uh, haven't shown a lot so far, but definitely... Um, He's shown up today. Coming right at the right end of the tournament, isn't he? Oh, absolutely. Look, that was just to get the power under that. Lockie Bellicott's a, a pretty good mover, and he had no chance. That was past him in no time. Cuts behind square that's another four that's another four yeah he does like to climb into the shot doesn't he what's any... the point of hitting a four when you can absolutely blaze it past the boundary yes. one of my cricketing comrades i suppose years ago the one great lindsay mason used to say to us you've got to make the fieldsman run all the way to the boundary so the ideal boundary was one that just Trickly. trickled into the fence <laughs> Well, Rex didn't obviously read that. No, no, way. he's not interested in that rubbish. No, he's, not, he's rather seeing it bounce back about 20 yards and saves the fielder's legs. <laughs> <laughs> will make them run <laughs> forever to, to fetch the ball. Uh, Matt Hallis just getting some photographer attention from Allison. Plenty of attention down on the boundary today, Matt. Shark like his mate. into Beveridge. Well, how could you not? Just a single Zach Beveridge. A bit of a standard. Though Dad shows up with the busted and animal cup. Puts the magic brew in and off he goes. Um, all right, give us an honest opinion, Tony. What's Zach Beveridge doing here? Is just nurdling the singles good enough? Are you potentially pulling yourself back from 200 to, to 170? Well, if you're going to be competitive, that's probably missing a second set of stumps. Yeah, absolutely. Like I, unless he's smart move and he's prepared to, uh, to take on the responsibility of from say over 15 uh, but they've got such a good platform they've got nothing to lose by well, I don't going. think so Rex is set just going just going completely mental <laughs> like it is a semi-final you, yeah. you lose it is good night good boy game over you've got it all to play for Lift it up. Is the so the, the yeah, I see where you're going with it, and there is uh, this merit in Zach okay, putting the foot down. I think so. Uh, um, maybe there wasn't merit in it. Oh, that's a great chip. What's it? That is a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Zach still de dealing in singles. <laughs> he's dealing. He's, he's dealing with the fallout of the sand cloud that he made in the bunker there. <laughs> Running through the haze. In fairness, he probably did well given the fact that he would have seen in his eyes <laughs> running that single. So Rex Tooley, I'm going to call for a helmet. Rampaging Rex Tooley. 
one for one twenty or thirty dive under the table. Russ, oh. um, I think. Uh, so this is the first time I've seen Young Rex bat. Not to be confused. Well, with. it's not. You have seen him bat before. Just he hasn't lasted long enough okay. in this tournament. Um, but yeah, what you're seeing now? What do you reckon? Oh, he's he's good to watch. He's, he's He's got a lot of power he generates in his swing. I like, I like that. I think he's looking to hit a 12. I think he's targeting the roof of the clubhouse here. So, yeah, I mean, before it was just talk, today I've seen the action. And for me, yeah, it's good to watch. That's the cricket you want to see. Yeah, it's nice to see uh, young fellas not shy coming out, hitting the ball. You know, a lot of, a lot of young fellas come up the grades and come into men's cricket and you know, struggle to get, get going feel the pressure a bit more. I sort of trying to find a place, aren't they, usually? Not rampaging Rex. No. All right, Sean McCarthy coming back. So, uh, Mr. Reliable didn't have the morning that uh, that uh, we're accustomed to. So, he was a bit of Mr. Unreliable this morning, unfortunately. Uh, most unlike him. So, back on it. Um, rarely does he bowl two bad spells. So, let's see what happens here. Um, so back on the the leading run scorers, leading wicket takers. So that's uh, that's a week on the houseboat with Jeff. Um, I don't think I'm uh, busting any myths here. Alex Welsh will clearly win uh, the bowling trophy. Um, he's had a fantastic tournament. Um, I think 18 wickets off five games or something. Um, and Blake Anderson will win the, the batting. So I uh, wonder if Blake will take the family, well, and Alex too, really. I wonder if they'll take the families on the houseboat with Jeff, or will they uh, will they choose to to take take friends and and rampage? I think I think Jeff would very much like the the boys' weekend, wouldn't he? The, the big fella. He'd, uh, he might want the rubber dinghy at the back of the houseboat by the end of it. I hear Jeff's houseboat's got a bit of power. You can get the, the skis attached to the back of it and power around the canals. Oh, Lake Annan. <laughs> In amongst the duckweed. <laughs> Watch out for the remote control boats. <laughs> uh, look, Shawnee, better over today. What to date? Two balls. One for one, two, three, or fourteen point two. What a platform! What a platform! Yeah, well, this is. I think this is where Zach Beveridge has to let the handbrake off and go. We've got the platform. I can sacrifice myself a little bit because anyone can come in and score at a runner ball like he is at the moment. Oh, a bit of misfielding there. So, Baz, can we get a smart move conveyancing replay there? There's a little point that I want to make to viewers about turning. Oh, there we go. That's that's enough, though. So, did we see there Zach Bickle turn... Zach Bickle. Zach Beveridge. Back in the game. Zach Beveridge turned blind. Um, so, the traditionalists would be mortified by what he's doing. Um, but the new age thinking is that you actually save precious time Jeez, that's a good shot. So precious time by not changing your hands. Yeah, by getting in and out in the quickest way possible and having your decision made mostly when you come in and then you, you tumble turn, you come out and uh, that's the quickest quickest way to get in and out and you make the second decision as you get out. And really? as you can see, Zach had, had an idea, turned, got out, paused, saw the misfield, off he goes. So uh, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a different... I can see your... A little bit, a little bit horrified there, Tony. A little bit because I wondered whether it's actually scientifically proven. I think if my, uh, my it issue is that if he's changed hands consciously when he the, he knows the direction where the ball's gone, if he's changed hands as he's running. But it's not about the changing the hands that cost you time. It's the using the other leg to get yourself in and out isn't as efficient as using your dominant leg. So just go to your dominant leg every time. Really? Yeah. I wonder if it, does it. I suppose if in a game of millimeters, it might make a difference, but. I'd like to see if that's actually proven. If I talk confidently enough and say that yes, uh, they've been studying it at such and such university, do you, would you believe me? 
probably not. Okay, well, I won't but it, but if but if you actually if it actually has been done, <laughs> I uh, I'd have to take it on board. Another misfield there by the Rockets um, and Sean McCarthy. Just the body language is showing a little bit of frustration. Uh, Sean is not happy. Not happy, Jean. One for one hundred and thirty-two. Uh, unfortunately, my gibbering has cost cost the uh, the school board its due attention. So they're saying the dominant leg choice on the turn, the efficiency is enough to override the actual turning blind. Yeah, that's right. Except when you get running it because you well, side of the ball. <laughs> but if you've made your decision before and then you reaffirm your decision after you've come out, you've actually done it quicker. Switch of ends for Blake Anderson. Uh, a bit of a switch up. Got the got the yeah. bogo from the other end. Rex is on strike and we're in trouble again. Yeah. Why not leave a ball when you're 60 or 70 off not many balls? <laughs> Why not <laughs> entertain yourself? Something different, isn't it? 64 off 39. Didn't feel like he actually climbed right into that. Yeah, it's, it's not okay. Uh, that's that's fantastic keeping there. That's not that was coming through at probably 100 k's and uh, Brandon Walker's gone goalkeeper. Here we go, smart done. move, commanding replay. He's close to the ground, Brandon. He's, he's probably helping. <laughs> Look at that. Look, Rex is if he gets one in the wheelhouse here. Look out, synthetic field. <laughs> Like it's uh, seriously, he gets himself so low down, like there, but he's almost the one knee generating all this power. The ball's going to go miles. Rob Old, I just like to see it. Single there to the Grimmer Blazers. Um, half time, Tony, are you going to partake in the uh, canteen here? Oh, look, I probably will. What's the. Ooh. What's the um, food of choice from? Well, I've had two boxes of chip chippies today. Oh. I find them quite good. Yeah. Now, now you were doing a uh, chicken and gravy roll last season or a couple of seasons ago. It looks as though opted out and taken the easy path. Oh, I think yeah, it was just from a from a food management point of view. <laughs> I think from a food management point of view, having George Casey running the deep fryer is uh, salmonella waiting to happen. <laughs> no, that there's a distinct set of rules in there. He must ab abide by <laughs> time settings. That the, is, uh, the big Rex trying to launch that one didn't quite get a hold of it. Single out to the magnificent Lockie Bellicott, deep mid wicket boundary. Score is 136, 136 off 16 overs. 16 overs. Yeah. yeah so Blazers have just faded. They haven't lost wickets. They're just. They just haven't gone Slow to the next down. level, have they? That, no. Um, or gone to the, the, the next gear. Realistically, at one for 100 after 11, they should have been pushing 200. Um, so in the last five overs, they've only gone at five and over. Do we do we put some credit down to the bowling? I mean, clearly... Well, you, you can, but unfortunately, just accepting singles all the time hasn't exactly paid off, has it? No. The If we had a worm graphic, Barry, can you get me a worm? Um, if we had a worm, if we had a worm graphic, we'd see the, the worm just flatten out considerably in the last five overs. And it's not really good enough, to be honest. No, not when you get that start. And you're right, I think it's, I think it's sort of a tactic here that may could actually bring hip pocket well and truly back into the game. Well, if they end up at the end of this, you know, three for 170, when they're 100, one for 110, after or one for 100 after 11, um, I hope it doesn't come back. Well, um, we're impartial. We we can shoot cricket, so yeah, won't come back to haunt anyone. But. But it is because it is a game, you know, such a short game, short format of the game. Little things make big differences. So, I mean, Rex has certainly shown some intent. He wants to go big, but even he's been. He's sort of lost his, lost his shape a little bit lately, been possibly trying to hit him too hard. Possibly, yeah. Possibly just. 
Um, other than deep fried, is there any hot food that I can be targeting over at the canteen? Probably deep fried. So there's no... We've got any burgers or... Oh, they were making burgers, I think, last round. Okay. That is, yeah, I just haven't familiarised myself with the menu as yet. I thought being a store... Are you a life member? Yes. Yeah, well, I would thought being a life member, you should... Uh, you should know what's going on with the menu. I don't well, think that there's any excuse. They don't think they didn't have to consult us. Really? No. And I was too busy oh, getting my work out with the super sopper. <laughs> How are the uh, is it the Hemis or the quads that are paying the price after an hour? Oh, I reckon sopper? tomorrow I'm going to be considerably tight. Yeah, in the saying the Hemis. I have to sure. get get home and get the roller out tonight. Mm -hmm. Roll it. Do you, do you know what to do on a roller? Because we certainly didn't have those things around in our day. No, that was, no, you don't need to do that when you're batting. This modern technology that generally, is the foam roller. Generally, the batsman, you just have to go and have your manicure. <laughs> you like uh, batsmen are like wingers, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Why well, do they? Although us openers, <laughs> usually where we were this glamorous is number three or four. Glamorous? You were the, the glamour puss of Toowoomba Cricket with your, your curly locks hanging out the back? I don't, I don't they see it quite that way, but... Ooh. Good short delivery of Joel. Oh, no, he. He's been cool the no ball. Is that just over shoulder hot? Is Angus going to do the customary two hot free hit? Uh, oh, front, front foot. foot. Front foot. Umpire okay. Rathy. Sean McCarthy won't like this. The umpires. I think Sean, he did bowl a no ball in 1997. <laughs> He's been punishing himself ever since. So, Sean, just I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure if Sean will ever speak to Angus again. Sean getting into the twilight of his cricketing career and might just cut all ties with Angus after calling that. Oh, it doesn't oh, cost. That bit of extra effort, Sean. Dot ball. It's 139, maybe 140. I'll check with the hamsters. I think the hamsters, do they have the Sunday lunch? No, the, to be honest, I'd probably say the hamsters are in front of me today. The hamsters at my cricket. Um, 140 off 17, so yeah, not, not great. Three we've overs, it's sort of like we've only got basically 18 balls to. 18 balls, and if we keep just parking singles, we're going to get another 18 runs. We're going to get, get 160. Um, and after being 100 off 11 overs, that is not really good enough. Blake Anderson continues. Right arm, low arm. Rex bops it. Sounds like one bounce to Amal Shah. Yep. At one stage there, I felt there could be a knee, shin, some sort of contact with the ball that was coming that fast. All right. What odds do you give of Zach Beveridge hitting a single here, Tone? Oh, it's fairly high. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'd say low odds, isn't it, really, if you're in the racing community. But Dollar and two. Yeah. Like you said, though, I think um, Grammar have done a fantastic job of pulling the handbrake on themselves. Russ, are we going to uh, get out and about with, around the grounds here shortly at the change of innings? Keen for a wander again? Got the yeah, thumbs, got up, from thumbs up from Russell. He's ready to roll. Intrepid would be the, oh, that bloody armrest again. Um, intrepid would be the way I'd describe Russell's camera work. Now is that going right, to go no, all that's, the way? That's over. I can just see from the trajectory here that it's over, and that sends Hamalsha into the swamp to retrieve. So Smart move, convincing replay, Tony. So we haven't seen a six for a few overs. Clint Hamel Shark yeah, quite comfortable. The camera might have been in trouble there for a second. Oh, I love a good ball hitting a camera shot. That's what we were playing for over there when we were doing the, the interviews. I wonder if that brings money. Now that's Rex banks well that hard. straight. I'm going to tip six again. I can't see it, but uh, umpire Carmody wanting to get the arms up. Oh yeah, he's looking at the AFL salute. Yes. Smart move. Carmody. Replay. Rex bang. That was hit very flat and hard. Oh, and a oh, bit of a shake of the hand from Mel. We can't quite see we catch uh, a that spot there? from, uh, from, from here. From, from our box. vantage point, the uh, Highfoot Sports Park Media Centre. 18 overs and uh, Grimmer Blazers.
kick back into gear. 154 off 18. Um, well, if Rex Turley actually hits a few more like that, they might get 180. I think the best thing Zach can do is uh, hit himself a single to get Rex on strike. Yep. I think, I don't know, we've got Luke to bowl this one, Luke Neal, and then uh, Pappenhaus and Hallis will bowl the last over. Resume his battle with Rex Tooley. To claim that title, Hallis has to definitely put some effort into a mullet. He would, being a little man, having the uh, moulet and the stash would be quite the achievement. Rex Tooley, 80 off 50. Um, so what do we got there? That's that's well over 150 strike rate. Zach Beveridge, 16 off 22. That's probably 75s or thereabouts. Luke Neal to Zach Beveridge. Beveridge, keeps a single. Right. One would feel this is where the contest is at. So, hit pocket. Looking at the boundary sweepers, it's quite extensive. I can see half circles nearly covered. Realistically, boundary fielders aren't going to do much if uh, Reximus gets under one of these. Off pace. S goodbye. That's snaps the wrist. He's just hasn't he just got himself in a position. He saw he's picked it up. He was in poor position really, but he's picked it up enough to be able to snap the wrist through and crack it over mid wicket. Do we get a smart move conveyance in replay on it? Have a, that's all right. Happy to happy to take. Oh, there oh, we no, go. Yeah, no, just There's Cameron Moody. Yeah. Moods has got himself a nice bit of mulletry action out the back there, hasn't he? He's just thought. Oh, that was a great shot, given the fact he's just changed it midway. Yeah. Saw the slower ball, snapped the wrist, slow ball again. Don't know. Looking for two, pushing for two. Beveridge turns blind, says no. Probably could have. How do you know on that throw? 162 off 18.3. Zach sort of really needs to just make sure he gets down the other end, doesn't he? Like, oh, well, to be honest, I think he's got to take the handbrake off and just swing because anyone else can come out and hit singles. He's yeah, not, Cole not Tonkin Tonkin team still in sit You know, the hitting power he's got yep. out here. Yep. Or leave that in the shed and just hit singles. So I'm, I'm a bit, bit perplexed, to be honest. So uh, we've got Rex on strike. And six three. Uh, Rex must be just under ninety, I think. Oh, missed times oh, that one. That was basically a cue ball. A bit disappointed, Rexy, because that could have gone straight into the timber up there. <laughs> could have the been army base. Could have been like plucking that out of the army base. Send someone else in there. That's landmine territory. <laughs> John Lee's <laughs> <laughs> one for one sixty four. Rex eighty eight off fifty three. Zach, Zach Bickle, <laughs> beverage. <laughs> oh, this, this could be two. <laughs> got a big side there for Zach, because I thought he actually got four. Yeah, no. The big fella's unleashed. 166 off 19. Um, big Rex on 88. Jeez, it'd be nice to see um, him, him get 100, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. One for 164. 166. 164 says the. Says the uh, He's given that bat a bit of a 166. Work. Yeah, no. Been a bit of a blue dogathon there for the Grammar Blazers. Um, been all blue dog bats thus far. Change of bowler, right arm mullet over. Big Gordon Hallis. <laughs> no, he's got a bit to go there. I had a, I had a night out with Gordon, and uh, I know this is a, uh, a family show, but my word, I've never seen a man drink like he could. Gordon Hallis. Holy moly, could he devour a scotch and cola? Maybe a scotch or bourbon or something, but. Yeah, his spirits consumption is amazing. Palace with the full toss, and Rex just <laughs> launches that. Stand still. Yeah, I'd be dying about running, so. Yes. <laughs> Not a priority. So, hey, economy rate just doubled. <laughs> <laughs> 
one for one seven two off nineteen point one. Um, Rex moved to ninety four. Rex Tooley. Like we said, we had a little little minor chop at him saying he hasn't done much this tournament, but he has scored a ton in the semi final. And oh, 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 Zach. Yeah, I think that's a safe call. <laughs> Good calling, Zach. 172 off 19.2. Rex Tooley, 94 runs off 55 balls. The innings has been brutal, hasn't it? I'm very impressed. Actually, it's a shame that he hasn't uh, faced more than 50% of the balls. Mm, that's right. In comes yeah. little Gordon Hallis. Rex. Oh. Another dot ball there. Tell you what, Hallis, I'd love to uh, tap into uh, stats man for hip pocket to see how many dot balls Matt Hallis has bowled this innings, but. Um, that, that to me is the key to winning T20 cricket games is the amount of dot balls you can bowl and, and Matt Hallis has bowled plenty. Oh, he's got that. That is a classy shot. That's a touch for you. Smart move, convincing replay tone. Yeah, look, that's delicate, isn't it? He just helped it on his way. He can be brutal. He can finesse. That's skill hands, too. Hands like a surgeon. That's skill. Um, there's nothing about it. The ball's coming at a reasonable rate. Big Rex, 98. 98 off 57. Two balls remaining in the innings. Be fantastic to see him get 100. Um, I would reckon Russell would stand and applaud. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, oh, oh. oh that's cruel. <laughs> Young man a clap. That was a fantastic knock because he comes off the field. That was fantastic. Cole Tom. Is it Tomkin? Tomkin. T O N K I N. Now, the interesting thing here will be are the umpires going to get the new rules right and put Kyle on strike because the new batter must go to strike. That well, was well batted. I've got to have a clap there. Too. Yeah, brutal, brutal innings by Rex. 98 yeah, runs. Um, that is a, a fine, fine performance. So, uh, congratulations to him. There's One ball remaining, 176. Oh, it's a really, it's in the interest of Grammar to get, uh, get Tonkin to actually face as many of these deliveries as possible. These deliveries? One. No, the remaining of the innings. Oh, this is the last over. I thought it was one to go. <laughs> one. So yes, it is one. in their best interest. Okay, so they, they could bank an easy single with Zach Beveridge. <laughs> <laughs> or sorry, I actually uh, lost sight of that. Matt Ellis into Kyle, and, and Kyle hits straight, yeah. chips over Luke Neal out for the swamp. They'll come back for two, and through it, through comes Zachy Beveridge. Two off the uh, Matt Ellis throwing the ball away. So, Jeez. has the umpire called over? That's interesting. Alright, so that ends Grandma Blazers innings 178. Um, so I'm sure they would have seven, taken eight. that at the start, but uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think they definitely threw away an opportunity by only scoring 68 runs, 78 runs off the last nine overs. Anywho. It is what it is, 178, very, very competitive total. Um, we'll go for a little uh, little wander and see if we can annoy some people. Very good. Whether you're a classic car enthusiast, own a high-performance vehicle, or you want your everyday drive or bike looked after, HM Mechanical has all your mechanical needs covered. From repairs and servicing, restorations, tune-ups and roadworthy certificates, you'll get honest, reliable and affordable service from HM Mechanical. They're located at 509 South Street, Toowoomba. Call them on 4632-8288 or find them on the web at hmmechanical.com.au. Book your pride and joy in with HM Mechanical, an experienced peace of mind motorist.
Smart Move Conveyancing have been helping people make their property dreams come true for over 25 years. With Smart Move, our specialised team will handle your property transaction from contract signing through to settlement and celebration. They are Toowoomba's digital conveyancing service with a personal approach. With some of the region's most experienced conveyancing managers, our team have seen it all so you can be assured of a stress-free experience. Get your quote today and let's make your property dream a reality. Search Smart Move Conveyancing to find out more. Looking for exposure for your next event or function? Take your next community event, training seminar, sports event, official opening, function, concert or exhibition live to the world with PTV Channel O and Power FM's unique live simulcast. We can turn your next local event into a worldwide sensation for a fraction of what you would expect to pay. No matter what the event, PTV Channel O and Power FM can take your message to our audience. Invite the world to your party by phoning 0431 390 920 or email feedback at ptvchannelo.com. Power FM is total entertainment. From the morning drive with Fiona and Jeff to the drive home with Jeff Black. On the weekends, catch the Crazy Kevin Show, Dennis Mitchell's Breakfast with the Beatles, the Semi-Pro Sports Show, and Racing Nation with James O'Shea, plus the music you grew up with. Keep your radio dial locked on Toowoomba's Power FM, celebrating 10 years. You'll find us at 88.0 on the FM dial or online at www.powerfmradio.com.au. It's on again in 2022, Jacaranda Day Gumbungee. Join us for this iconic Queensland event Saturday the 5th of November from 8am to 2pm. Make a day of it starting with Rob Prentice's A Moment in Time exhibition. We've got a bullock team which is the first time we've had a complete team. There's 14 bullocks pulling a 6 tonne load and in the background is a big Moreton Bay fig. Watch hay bale roping with Australia's greatest horseman Mark Buttsworth from 8am. Step back in time at the standing display of working and static steam engines and machinery and enjoy the parade of classic cars and vehicles along with community groups from 10.30am. Can't get there in person? No worries. The parade will be streamed live and free on PTV Channel O. For more information, contact Denise on 0419 736 493 or visit the Jacaranda Day Gumbungee Facebook page. Rightio. Joined here by Rex Tooley. The big fellow went uh, nuts in the first innings and scored 98 off around about 60 balls. Rex, what about it? Thank you. Yeah, got a hold of a few? Yeah, I got oh, eight, eight or six, six or something like that. Yeah, nice. Got a hold of a few. Nice. I just you probably, get out there. You probably hit more, more sixes than Zach Kirby hit singles. <laughs> <laughs> he spent a lot of time hitting singles out there, didn't he? He did hit a fair few, yeah. We're trying to get those twos, but it wasn't happening. Yep. Yep. Oh, well. Right, so um, so it's been a pretty quiet tournament for you so far, but yeah. uh, really launched into it that game there, that innings. What what was the change? Oh, I guess oh, yesterday when seconds for Westies, I got oh, 85 or something. So I guess it gave me a bit of confidence coming into it. Oh, very good. Umpires are on their way. We'll leave you to it. Uh, but congratulations. Do that again in the grand final and you'll get yourself a brand new ticket back. Easy. Good luck. Thank you. Whether you're a classic car enthusiast, own a high-performance vehicle, or you want your everyday drive or bike looked after, HM Mechanical has all your mechanical needs covered. From repairs and servicing, restorations, tune-ups and roadworthy certificates, you'll get honest, reliable and affordable service from HM Mechanical. They're located at 509 South Street, Toowoomba. Call them on 4632-8288 or find them on the web at hmmechanical.com.au. Book your pride and joy in with HM Mechanical and experience peace of mind motoring. Smart Move Conveyancing have been helping people make their property dreams come true for over 25 years. With Smart Move, our specialised team will handle your property transaction from contract signing through to settlement and celebration. They are Toowoomba's digital conveyancing service with a personal approach. With some of the region's most experienced conveyancing managers, our team have seen it all so you can be assured of a stress-free experience. Get your quote today and let's make your property dream a reality. Search Smart Move Conveyancing to find out more. 
Looking for exposure for your next event or function? Take your next community event, training seminar, sports event, official opening, function, concert or exhibition live to the world with PTV Channel O and Power FM's unique live simulcast. We can turn your next local event into a worldwide sensation for a fraction of what you would expect to pay. No matter what the event, PTV Channel O and Power FM can take your message to our audience. Invite the world to your party by phoning 0431 390 920 or email feedback at ptvchannelo.com. Scored 178. They did look at one stage as though they were going to score 200, but uh, didn't quite make it. Still, one for 178, two for 178. Uh, pretty fantastic innings, con considering they were targeting 150. Uh, so I'd probably say advantage Grammar Blazers at the moment. But let's see how, how our friends from the Hip Pocket Rockets fare. Joined in commentary by Tony Anderson. Tony, what did you do in the innings break? I grabbed a packet of uh, chicken chips. You know, um, too, much, too much chicken isn't good for you. Apparently so. They say you can start growing. Well, things. as long as it, uh, you add to the right part. Biceps. That's right. Oh, quick single here. Um, Blake Anderson and Gavin Steger at the crease. Steger just took the, the quick single. Um, they are making hamburgers, do you see? You know? Yes, I smelt it as I went over and uh, got the bats. Now, I just said to Denise, uh, Denise there, Denise Marsh, <laughs> one of our local legends. Have five of them ready for Remus. Yeah, I just said, look, that hamburgers are going to get hit at lunchtime. She said, Tone, I've got a cupboard. Keep on your knees here. Denise Marsh, uh, I've had a little bit to do with women's cricket, but had Denise Marsh been around now, I do believe she would have played a lot of first class cricket. She was a beautiful bat. She's just a talented person, like talented sports person. Yeah, yeah, same as uh, everyone out of that stable, isn't it? The yeah. Joey and, and then the Gibbses, and they can all play sport, whichever sport they choose. Keith Charles. All right, leading run scorer, Blake Anderson on strike to Paul Drum. Yeah, there's little respect shown to the ball when Blake Anderson is batting. Tone, see this goose getting around the boundary with two dogs? Yeah, why would you bring two dogs? You know this guy? No, not at all. <laughs> you think he's got his plastic bag to pick up what the dogs leave behind? Oh, don't you spray deodorant in there and sniff it or something? Isn't that what the kids are doing? I haven't heard that one. Oh, Gavin Steger. Hazing. I don't know what they do these days. Uh, seeing Gavin Steger take facing drum. So is, is it drum or drahim? <laughs> drahim. Drahim. No, drum. Um, that was, uh, oh, once again, my arm rest falls down. <laughs> it's going to uh, seriously affect contractual agreements for any potential commentary next year. Uh, two runs off that first over. Um, the interesting interview with Rex. Oh, right, yeah. Didn't, didn't know much about his innings except for how many sixes he hit. Well, he's just keeping what matters. A, a, valuable, um, a valuable insight into the mindset of a rampaging athlete. Yeah, how many times they clear the boundary in the fall? That's all that matters today. <laughs> Big Jack Carter coming on for his first over. I'll have to talk me through this a little bit. I've got a good view of Russ's back. <laughs> um, Zachary, I love to hit singles beverage, just in consultation with uh, Jack Carter and leading wicket taker Alex Welsh. Uh, Alex Sunny Welsh, the big happy man from the north of England. Big Jack. That ball just disappears into his mitt, doesn't it? Adjusting the hair, do there. Bring you back to the mark. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Well, if you've got hair, use it, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, second over. So, uh, Spear Pocket haven't got time to mess about, do they? No, that's that's one thing that's been laid out for them. They haven't got to put a lot of time and effort into a plan. It's just hit the ball into more places than Grandma did. They want to win the game. Bit of pressure on the hip pocket camp. What do you think? Uh, 
What do you think the mood's like over there under the red tent? I think the mood might be a little bit sullen. Um, I think they, they back their bowling ability to uh, keep them below um, keep them below 150. So they, they uh, Luke Neal openly said to me that their pass score was 150, so they, they missed that by a fair bit. Anderson takes the single. Blake not noted for his single take. Um, early in his innings, I suppose, he's prone to take a few, but as... Uh, likes to clear the old leg and whack him through the offside, or as the bowler chooses to follow, pump it through the leg side. Yeah, certainly as fatigue sets in, it's a little bit like I'm going to stand in the liver. For fatigue to be pronounced as it's spelt. Fatigue. Fatigue. It's a bit like picturesque as pittesque. <laughs> That's it. Hey, thinking cricketers, we are. Oh. Okay. No, no, it's just target Barry. We're not French. Um, I, uh, I've got one of my good mates who's a terrific farmer, pronounces uh, debris as uh, Debris. Well, Debris, why not? White ball there from Big Jack. I think he's taken the mickey out of me, but um, nonetheless. No, we've, we've had a lot of time to stand out in the sun on long days in the field and cook our brains and thinking about completely irre irrelevant things like uh, what would other people Patagoo be doing? <laughs> <laughs> what would the sensible people be doing? Yeah. Yeah, particularly when you're fielding and they're none down for like 200. Oh, Gav oh. swings through the line, diving oh, down and yes. four runs. That's a good slot. Was that Paul Drahimi? Smart move conveyancing replay will tell us. Big Gav swipes across it. Keeps it on the floor, and oh, that does look like Drahim out there. Yeah, it looks like that. Paul's going to have to contend with a bit of a wet front to his outfit because that is <laughs> his body skirting down. Straight through the, uh, the aquaplane. I'm surprised we didn't see a big spray of water coming. Speaking of pronouncing things the way they should, remember the old 12th man with Graeme Lebroy? Oh, absolutely. Imagine if we had Graeme Drahim. Graeme Drahim. <laughs> I was only thinking about growing in your LeBroy the other day. <laughs> oh, 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 big Gav. That's gone all the way into the pond. Big fella has just walked down and uh, congratulated himself with that one, but uh, that is a nice swat. Smart move, conveyancing replay, Tony. I know. Kaboom. It, look, it looks agricultural, doesn't it? But it always There's looks a bit, good. A bit more than agriculture in that. Um, True. There's, there's a little bit of front elbow going on. Um, he kept his shape. Look, it, it actually looked quite nice. In the I'm being accosted by the uh, side panel to the uh, media centre. I got a glimpse on the Smart Move Conveyancing replay. Uh, that gentleman, namely my brother, with his two dogs, nearly got hit with a cricket ball. That'd be funny, wouldn't it? You bring down that big cruiser dog of his. That could be <laughs> She's a nice dog cruiser. Nice nature. You wouldn't know it looking at her. Yeah, no, she looks like she'd uh, like to chew on your arm for a while. Mm, when she's finished that, start in your leg. <laughs> so, have a stay. I like it when the big fella tees off. Did he bother taking centre? Finer details, not really his thing. All right, big Jack. Steger pumps it straight at, straight at singles beverage. Yeah. I was all over the uh, the bulls in that over. Got to 1.3. So going ball by ball is overrated. <laughs> I've found that you just go over the way over. Giving, giving people up to that information, not required. Not required. None for 14 off two. Most of our viewers are watching it for the love of the game. That's right. Uh, Graimi, Drahimi. Drahimi. Coming on to bowl. I get uh, called up for the Sri Lankan first 11. The... The flexible media centre wall has uh, given me a bit of room to stretch out now. I don't feel so claustrophobic. So like you got the feeling you're sitting on an aeroplane there for a minute, did you? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, they'll be back. I've got to admit, Barry's gone next level with the synthetic turf gabber grass flooring. We've got in Well, I'd say a few people on the uh, soft outfields have probably uh, sunk into the turf. Uh, some of those people that have a bigger frame. The quicksand in the bayou. <laughs> yes, that's right. You might see the odd gator out here if it keeps raining. 
actually. Now we gator had coming out of the swamp. We had a gator in the swamp earlier. Actually, we had the PTV Channel O uh, car coming through the swamp at one stage. Barry had it on hovercraft mode. <laughs> yeah, Barry completely oblivious to our, our arm waving and swamp like finger pointing. <laughs> <laughs> Just ignoring it. <laughs> <laughs> Barry, Barry don't come anymore. It was a great shot there from Blake Anderson. Sorry, we're just digressing from the cricket. <laughs> Sorry, we're just digressing from Barry's driving. I thought cricket, was, cricket getting in the way. I thought it was a Targa rally. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? A Daihatsu Hyundai i20. Oh, no, oh Anderson with a um, textbook um, sweep. To the deep. The media centre. So when did you do your trade and storming and packing? <laughs> Barry was actually a former Tetris world champion. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm just thinking that Weepix ad where there's two blokes in the back and someone trying to shove a pineapple in beside your head. Tell you what, the, the not a better side in cricket than Gavin Steger running a quick single. Do you need a stopwatch? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if it... Uh, Seconds don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely no concern with the uh, point, the tenths of a second. So is he giving giving him the deathly stare when he's calling for two? <laughs> Are you kidding? I, sh I shouldn't throw stones. I must admit I'd have a lot of trouble running a two. I have a lot of trouble running a one. I would be running them. Uh, none for 20 off three. Uh, in comparison, if we had a worm graphic, which Barry does tell us will be coming next year, but... Along with the Manhattan? Yes, and uh, and condiments and hors d'oeuvres in the media centre. Yep. <laughs> but uh, at the same stage, Grimmer Blazers, none for 27, so slightly behind. Stagger playing a beautiful off-drive for nothing. He stood there and admired the shot for a second. He did. He liked it. No. Too bad. Oh, oh. seventeen hundred and forty-four views overall for our coverage of the DDBBL last week. Um, Hello to those seventeen hundred people out there. Do we know their names? Oh. Barry, there's Yuki. <laughs> Kent and Tony. <laughs> There's 20 in the grandstand here. It's great to hear that people. Barry signed in 1,500 times. So I'm just happy that people are happy to put up with this. I uh, know, in, in the uh, free-to-air TV uh, power rankings, we're right up there. Stegger, up and on. Oh, unfortunately. Did he have a little look? Big Rex. Smart move convincing replay. Does it show just as the ball was entering the hands? Oh. I'm not sure if his footing was 100% there. Brought him a little bit undone, didn't it? So already behind on run rate, they're uh, two runs and over slower than what the Blazers were. Jack Carter. Coming into Blake Anderson. Harrison. Now, speaking of uh, saying things the way they're spelt, Harrison Zenis as the keeper. T Z A N N E S. Yeah, so you'd be thinking about the. When you <laughs> oh, it's more like a Tazar. Like a Tazar. <laughs> tazar. And it is pronounced Zenis. Yeah, righto. Um, Moving right along. <laughs> I prefer to Zenis. <laughs> to Zenis. <laughs> to Zanes. Jack to Blake. So how would you... Oh, big shout from Jack. Big shout, but umpire Carmody had 0% interest in that. Smart move, amazing replay tone. While we're just uh, dwelling on... Ooh, yeah, looked yeah. awkward. Low enough, but I don't think you... Things down, leg. Um, talk about pronunciations. Jack Carter. Carter. You just can't do anything with it, can you? Carter. <laughs> we weren't French. Jack, Jack to Blake Anderson and oh, that's gone. got away with one. Oh, that's a good save. Is that Jack Beveridge? Can we get a 
Can we get a smart move convincing on re replay on that at all, Bass? Because it'd be interesting. It, uh, I think uh, Kyle did a fine job. I was actually going to complain that he might upset the boundary markers. Here we are, here we are, here we are. No. Had Barry uh, spent a bit more time on the PS2 console, <laughs> we might have been able to get you a replay of that. He didn't actually upset my boundary markers. No, yet. no. Oh, it's good. It's good effort, Jack. Overkill of boundary markers there, Tony. It's the visual. 22 off 4, four. hip pocket rockets are behind the game now. They, uh, as long as they let this slide. So I'm just wondering how how long do we start to see, you know, messages start to come out of the tent from the hip pocket guys. I mean, they, like Clarkie's not one at sitting still for long. It could be a bit of Coach Clarkovich. Coach Clark, yep, beavering around the tent over there. There was a footballer, the Boiber Menzies. I. Uh, not big on New South Welshmen, but if there was a New South Welshman you'd be happy to claim as a Queenslander, I would have taken the boiver. Oh, probably, yeah. The only one I would have taken is Wayne Pearce. Yeah, yeah. Along a similar vein, aren't they? You know, New South Welshman you can't hate. Um, he could have played for us. He would have fit in well. Once again, brings you back to the old uh, 12th man sports tapes. Beers off, Jack Gibbs on. <laughs> yeah. What'd you say? You could forget <laughs> the images of Eric Grove with more tape on him and strapping tape than the mummy. Six countries we're beaming Six into. Countries. I'm going to back us. We're going to be hitting India, Sri Lanka, Afghanistan, Australia. Um, a random pom in there, I reckon. Um, and Singapore. Singapore. We're reaching the people of Singapore. I got a I got a good friend who's now in Brisbane, but he's uh, in the Singaporean national indoor cricket team. Which reminds me, shout out to uh, Rob Fitzy Fitzgerald. Um, Played in DDBBL again this year, uh, and Lyle Teske, who's previously played in the DDBBL. Both of them overnight became multi world champions in uh, multi year world champions in indoor cricket. Really? Um, yeah, yeah. Australia won the, the World Cup final against New Zealand, absolutely pumped them. Um, I think something along the lines of 50 to 120. Um, and yeah, both those lads uh, in that, that World Cup team. So, oh, big Jack gets the big mitts up, but not in time. So yes, congratulations to a couple of our DDBBL boys in Malteski and uh, Fitzy Fitzgerald for, uh, for winning themselves the World Cup. They've done it for many, many years. Um, Australia's dominance in indoor cricket is uh, actually something to behold. I don't think they've ever lost a World Cup. Where was the tournament played? Melbourne. Okay. The boys didn't even get the chance to go overseas, unfortunately. Oh, well. It was probably safer at Melbourne. Oh. Playing, <laughs> playing a World Cup at home has its advantages too. Well, I suppose you get crowd support. <laughs> oh, Baz. Boom. Tish. <laughs> hey, Baz. Tuning in with the humour from the sidelines. Well, I was just going to say, a very good point, Baz. If we take particular time to realise that most of Victoria is underwater. Jack Carter to Gavin Steger. Gav swings away, oh. doesn't get it, but gets enough of it. There's a bit of urgency going on. Potentially turning twos into singles there, Gav. Smart move conveying single show that Gav just not quite in the middle of the bat. High, high in the splice. Do you remember the, those ice creams, the splices? Yes, they do. I think still got some. They're still around. Yep. No. Now on. we've got uh, got the power couple of Toowoomba Cricket, Hayden Campbell and uh, Daniel Pollock, all making their way around the outfield, sauntering, so to speak. Pollock hit me up for a chance to go on commentary. Did I hope you said no? Wow. Well, I said I said we could mix it up. 
Um, no, the, an the answer's a hard no. I don't want to hear that voice on commentary. Okay, we might I've heard enough of him in the field to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Those of you that don't know Paul, he's not short of a word. Uh, yeah, but sounds like a chihuahua. <laughs> <laughs> a wounded chihuahua. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully the boys don't get bogged in the swamp behind us. Actually, I'm a bit concerned later this afternoon, the, that's off the bat, Jack. Can't be giving out LBW if they hit it, Jack. There's a forecast of rain. What about a forecast of mosquitoes? <laughs> <laughs> I'm right, I've got a blood transfusion. <laughs> Carry around one in the car. Um, Blaze is well on top here. Well, well on top. None for 20. No, no, it won't make Graham happy. None for 25 off almost six overs. Oh. And Anderson's tried to uh, meet that with his chest. And I think uh, as the players realise the gravity of the situation and start going for more and more bigger shots, I think you'll see more desperation. You said messages coming out. I dare say there's a message. What do you reckon that message is? Oh, uh, can I have a pint chips at lunch, please? <laughs> Hit the ball, you pillock. <laughs> oh, we're playing cricket, that's right. <laughs> I'm sure I knew there'd be a message. There had to be. So, for the hip pocket rockets, the equation's getting alarming. They need 100 and 154 runs. No, yeah, 154 runs. Now are 14 overs. So that's that's more, that's up around 11 and over. And... Uh, yeah, you're going to have to have to get moving. Blake Anderson, 10 off 18. Gavin Steger, 14 off 18. Um, no one's going at 100% strike rate, and they get, they're falling behind big time. Uh, Grahimi, Drahimi, coming on to bowl his fourth over. A little bit of uh, working out what we're doing here. Not often you see a uh, fine leg to a spin bowl. Is a, it is an energy position, a, a full length wide finally, like a, a boundary oh, now now going to change. Square. Square. So I'm pretty confident we're going to see some fireworks here regardless. Someone's going to have to have a, have a go here. Why, what, when we're needing 11s and just blocking the ball. So this is interesting, isn't it? Like with every single, the pressure's mounting. Yeah, when you need two a ball, every single's just just making it harder and harder, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's a bit of a challenge for Clarkie to sort of start thinking of new messages. I think. Well, I think to run there's out. just be one one message. Run out repeatedly. Please hit the ball. See across the field, Daniel Pollock walking around bare feet. He'd be used to that. I think most of the Gatton farmers have no shoes. Yeah, they like to get the uh, the toes in the black soil of Rocky Valley. Any word on how the uh, the Valley's cricket team in the Ipswich comp went yesterday? No, I haven't actually heard. Right. So... Steger putting pressure on with uh, running the first first one hard. Twenty-seven, six point four overs. It's all to do, isn't it? Oh, here we go. Oh, couldn't bowl there to Paul Drum. Removes Blake Anderson. Paul Drum, <laughs> smart move from eighteen replay. If you have audio, you could pick up the distinct loud call of me, 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 me. Wasn't interested in allowing the man with the gloves to do the easy work for him. <laughs> Shouldered the load himself, he and fair enough, he took it. Took on the responsibility. And the wicketkeeper returned serve by saying, no worries, mate, I don't want to be blamed for dropping it. <laughs> oh, well, you got to own it. you got to own it. All right, this brings Luke Neal to the crease. Luke Neal scored 100 in uh, club cricket yesterday, so in some kind of form, and he's got a bit of a mountain to climb, in my opinion. This is a bit of a, yeah, 
like Luke, he usually takes a little while to work his way into his innings, but unfortunately he doesn't have a lot of time to do yeah, that. Yeah, well, will, he, will he have the confidence to work his way into it? You know, to be fair too, you've got to have a fairly expensive game when you're chasing sort of 10, 11 and over. Mm. Uh, means you've got to be able to clear the boundary on a number of angles or a number of positions on the field. Not a lot of batsmen can do that. You know, they have their strong zones, certainly plenty of weak zones, but it's one of the pressures of chasing a total, I suppose. From to Neil. Neil just Happens. drops it around the corner. Happens here. Neil would have been interested in two, but uh Gav Steger flagging his interest in twos there by almost moving backwards. I'd line him up with the light pole and see he's still moving forward there for a second. Big Gav. Ah! So, I can confirm who our uh, Singaporean viewers are. Really? Yes. Okay. Yeah, no, look, I'm, I'm connected. I, I can do amazing things. I can also receive messages from Grant Spees, who is currently in Singapore. So our Singapore viewers? Are not Singaporean viewers at all. They're Australians on holidays. Live wide light, lightning owners. Grant Spees is our Singaporean. Yes, or Australiaporeans. Sort of they're, they're definitely not poor Australians, I can tell you that much. <laughs> so the life of a sparky. I'll get back to this scoreboard one day, don't worry. How's the dedication of our live wide light lightning guys? In Singapore, still tuning away. in, tuning into cricket. Oh, big Gab just foxing for an overthrow there. Shout out to Granty over there in uh, in Singapore. Um, I dare say he's there for something horse racing related or probably not cricket related in Singapore. So yeah, I'll go horse racing. Getting some presents in Singapore, I'm impressed with that. Luke Neal, chipping that one over point and four runs, much needed boundary for the hip pocket rockets. So probably just for the um, interest of the viewers, our decision to play the second game on time today. Yeah. Uh, at this stage, rain is forecast for late in the afternoon. Hopefully, we can hold off long enough for us to get our end, our final through. Yeah, and in the end, you know, we schedule an hour's break between games, and um, you go to other T20 tournaments where teams play two in a day, and they literally just move from one ground to another without break. So, um, these supreme modern-day athletes like Steger, for example. Um, moving from one game to another um, seamlessly is, is not a big impost on their, their physical condition. No, oh, they're just relishing it, don't they? Relish, I like relish. Relish. Cole Tonkin. Unfortunately, Cole, right arm hyperextension. Gav Steger just takes the the boundary. Gets one through Mitch Small out there on the boundary. Hey, Mitch. Smart move, conveying replay tone. Um, that's right, last week we... Uh, we did smart move conveyancing and moved to the HM Mechanical, formerly known as smart move conveyancing replay, didn't we? Yeah, and then we had to get through all the legal implications. And just went back to yeah. smart move conveyancing. Shiny, sort of. Shiny called him Murdoch Lawyers. Yeah, the Murdoch Lawyers guys came in and did a lot of finger pointing. And we had to get uh, Hastings steering to dig us out of the poo. <laughs> Thanks to our sponsors for helping us out too. We this tournament we'd... would be nothing without the sponsors. We proudly, um, we proudly put on this tournament and don't charge people to play. And the only way you can do that is by having great sponsors. Luke Neal slaps one away over mid on, just a single out to Mitch Small. Uh, he's got the Pappenhausen style haircut, minus the mo out on the boundary. He's got flowing locks, hasn't he? Yeah, it's good to see that the, the boys are sort of keeping up with it. Reminds me of a young Tony Anderson. No, I didn't. I think I had hair quite that long. 
No, you're right. The sponsors do play such a uh, valued role in this whole process. Shebang. Wish we could give them more exposure than we currently do. But anyway, well, we've I was thinking about getting a Murdoch lawyer's tattoo. Are we? Mm. Murdoch lawyers. I, th I think as the naming rights sponsor, they're entitled to that. And then... Uh, and then maybe uh, you could get a little Hastings Deering cat across the back. <laughs> <laughs> I love my caterpillar. <laughs> and talking all this rubbish, I'll let us down on the scoreboard again. Change of bowlers. Zachary, I love singles beverage. Luke Neal obviously got a bit of urgency about it, but understandably so. Gav Steger, feeling he's going to go large here. Oh, he's got to. Oh. Required run rate. So what do we need? 100 and 140 or thereabouts off 12. Um, yeah, we're up into... Worlds already. Alarm bells. It allows the slow bowlers to really get into the game, doesn't it? Like this off pace bowling. Got to have good footwork here. Well, considering they haven't even been requiring the services of the tournament's leading wicket taker, Alex Welsh, thus far, they've still got him up their sleeve. Um, yeah, not looking good for the Rockets. So the Rockets, correct me if I'm wrong, have they played in both finals? On no, I don't think the Rockets have played in any finals, mate. They beat Ada Care in the first year. Was that in the semi? Well, the Rockets. Oh, the Rockets. The Rockets. The Rockets, yeah. In the they first, sorry. The Rockets won it last time. Yeah. Um, but they weren't in the finals the second time. They just missed the first time. They just missed the semi finals. Remember, out here at Highfield Sports Park, the ball came right down to the boundary and. Just trying to think the series of events on you, the Rock because Hip Rock is a one at one. Yes, they won the last instalment prior to COVID. Stagger. Yes, it was all over Facebook. Oh, it's good to see that the, yeah, the message is getting out there, isn't it? So. I'm just checking the hip pocket scoreboard is the same as ours. <laughs> one for 46. Trust them oh. more than me, mate. On the uh, one oh. for four. No, I think one yeah. for 46. I concur. Concur. Okay. They're probably uh, picking it up off the app over there. Might be working in that part of the area. Well, no, the app's working here. Just I'm not. Oh, okay. That's all right. Well, I, I could be some help to you, but I'm, I'm elected just to sit back and enjoy the moment. <laughs> enjoy the spectacle. <laughs> What, 2020 cricket for boards? One for 46. Mm. Off nine. Mm. Ah. Oh, okay. So ah, the, the magic point. of social media. The, is that the ripple effect? Yeah. Tonkin oh. into Luke Neal. Luke Neal. Showing that bit of urgency there. Mind you, that is uh, the Gavin Stager running between wickets is rubbing off on Neil. Well, I think uh, I think Luke knows that there's not going to be too many twos, which really means Gav Stager's got to move along here. Goes hard at it. Shows a little bit of urgency in the first run. Yeah, good throw from the boundary. Forty nine off nine point three cloud One cover. We get down, cloud cover rolling in. Media centre just flexing in the breeze as it's designed to do. Luke Neal just gives one there. Out to point. It's still comforting to know we haven't got to use the cyclone rods to hold the structure together. We don't have to drill to the earth's core to secure the base of the building. 
Something as it has been do. in the past. One thing I do have to do is continually adjust my armrest. Absolutely. <laughs> what I said, you only need to go to the five dollar chair. I expect I expect upgrades. To be honest, uh, Barry, I should have a higher chair so I can see above this monitor. Um, like a bar stool. Yeah. Rex Tooley doing it all in the field. So one for fifty one. And I'm actually on parity with the ball's bowl as well. Um Gav Stag is just doing an adjustment to his footwear. This might be the reason why he hasn't been able to really leg it between the wickets. <laughs> yes. I'd say now that he's fixed his feet the twos and threes will flow. Yeah, it's been a shoe problem all along. Gav. Yeah. So shoe. <laughs> Barry's just chiming in with the big ones. The shoe need to settle down there, Barry. <laughs> Barry, for those of you who don't know, it's hard to get a word out of him. <laughs> Today it's just flowing. Um, now, Jeff did tell me, Barry, that you brought the uh, gift vouchers to the uh, weekend on Jeff's houseboat. You've got them? I've, I've got all yes, fantastic. All right, that's a that's a way of my mind. The uh, procession will continue this evening. The presentation. Luke Neal just dives down through third man, turning, looking for two. Um, the houseboat's been fully remodelled, has it? Has all the fire damage been <laughs> eliminated? <laughs> they just put the houseboat on the uh, on the trailer to bring it out to uh, Lake Kubi here. Out at Sunny Highfield Sports Park. There's plenty of water out, so That's it. Yep. Got people uh, sending me text messages here. I must be upsetting someone. Let's see. <laughs> no, it's just my daughter telling me that I am so good on commentary. Uh, thank you, sweetheart. You're. Uh, your positivity makes me uh, feel much better about myself. Uplifting moment there for a father. Yeah, my little heart sings. Gav Steger. Zach, a beverage sneaks one past the aggression of Gav Steger. Smart move, convincing replay time. Let's see these. Is it leg peg goes back? Uh, middle leg, I'd assume. No, leg. Good call time. Leg peg. Or rocked back. I'd probably say Zach's intention was to swing that one, spin that one past the bat, but it didn't. He'll, uh, he'll be claiming arm ball. I bowled a lot of arm balls. I didn't. I don't recall you bowling a lot. We didn't play each other a lot, but I don't recall you bowling a lot. I do remember seeing you bowl a couple in the nets and seamers, and being. Um, Mildly impressed. That must have been on a good day. <laughs> Generally, when I was brought in to bowl, things were desperate. It was buying a wicket at well, the very least. I'm just trying to work out who's the young lady from the hip pocket that runs onto the field with the vigour. With the what? With the vigour of. Oh, I thought like you said with the beer. <laughs> um, Peter Donovan. Peter, she's running on with some gusto. <laughs> All right. You better working overtime over there for the hip pocket rockets. This is uh, Rocky, Rocky Bellicott. Bellicott. Got the arm strapped in. Just lets the first one go. Got the head strapped on. Captain Beveridge with his tail up now. Yeah. Rightly so. I mean, he's in a good position here at Grammar Blazers. Slows that one down. Another dot ball to the tally. T20 cricket is, uh, we like to talk it up and the tactics and everything else, but quite often the team that just bowls the most dot balls wins the games, don't they? Nice shot by Velicott, coming back for Chu. Colt Tonkin fires it into the keeper. Harrison to Zenis. To Zenis. Paul Drahimi. Drahimi Drahimi. 
beverage to Bellicott. Zach does a lot of it. Yeah, that's still only a single though. Zach does a lot of bowling. Is it defensive bowling from around the wicket? He seems yep. to favour bowling into the pads to the right hand. Is a lot. Yeah, just hit the hip, isn't it? Um, we were privy to that style of uh, bowling with the great uh, Cameron the King Brimblecombe in our Darling Downsides, opening the bowling, bowling off spin, just hitting the hip. Luke Neal launches one for six runs over mid-wicket. Uh, Peter Donovan, not only fantastic at running the drinks, but uh, playing the one-hand, one-bounce one rule it's to claim the catch. It was a, a quite, quite a clean take there, one-hand, one-bounces. Peter's a um, quality indoor cricketer. OK, she's showing a form because there could have been a bit of deviation either way. I'm surprised she didn't uh, catch it with one hand and try and flick it a la indoor cricket style. Oh, uh, at the stumps at 90 degrees to where it come from. Yeah. All right, change of bowling. Um, Mitchell Short going to let, let the locks out and uh, free flow his way to the wicket. He's got a quite explosive running stall. Like <laughs> he, he just sort of ambles in and then it all happens at the crease. And all of a sudden the ball comes out with quite a bit of pace. Skids them through. Yeah, he's bustles. Say what he classed as bowls a heavy ball. Two for 62. Still needing 127 or thereabouts off nine overs. This is uh, getting into diabolical territory now. Talking about indoor crickets and flicking, one of the uh, class cricketers I had the fortunate chance to play with is one young Alan Wilson, who's unfortunately, like me, not as young as we used to be. Oh, bold. Shorty. So, that's Devo for the Hip Pocket Rockets. Lockie Valakot, who's a noted big hitter, departs. Was that a played on? Was it a smart I don't think so. Advancing replay? Was it just cleaned up? I don't think that was just a clean bowl. Yeah, Alan Wilson was a fine indoor cricketer. The, I think the player of the tournament at the Australian National Titles wins the Alan Wilson medal. Uh, such was his standing in, in Australian indoor cricket. Um, and he was, yeah, he's a real presence on the court. So tall man and fielding at what they call second up, which is like a very close cover. Um, just seemed to have wingspan and height. It was really hard to hit the ball around, over or past him. So on the on, uh, on the field with Willie, you had to be on your medal because you you just didn't know when he was going to have a shot <laughs> at the bowler's end. And from where? And from where? So he kept Little us all on our toes. toes. He, sorry? He kept us all on our toes. Good. What and a class bowler actually, yeah, bowled well and hit a ball. Up yeah, the ball. yeah. There are. I'd like to see him. There are stories him about him uh, whacking balls up onto hills at Heritage Oval, as it was known back then. Mm, absolutely, uh, with a county bat that had a middle in it that you could mere, squ measure in square millimeters. Okay, so we've got the little person show batting at the moment. Luke Neal, Matt Hallis. When these guys turn it on. Um, they do really well. Four runs, little glide. Wouldn't have even been through a gully. Would have been through what would have been slips. Four runs to Luke Neal. Much needed boundary. Entertaining, aren't they, these pair? Oh, these, these two can bat together really well because they're both fine runners between the wickets. Um, they can easily go at tens without hitting boundaries. Uh, just run the, the guts out of things. Runs a lot of twos. But well, they're quite literally going to have to do that. They're going to have to find... A big way to hunt these runs down. They'd like to go at 15s. Yeah, going to have to run by threes and over. So Shorty, Shorty having a great start. Sorry, viewers, I've developed some hiccups. Just the butterflies getting to you, anticipated the outcome of this game. Oh, that's, oh, that's going to be six runs. I've just given uh, Shorty the bowling well, and I think he's been hit over the swamp. I must admit, though, uh, waist-high full toss is, unfortunately, probably not right into the arc anyway. Not the good option. Is there an arc out in the swamp? There is an arc no. in the swamp. 
he's parked the ark. He's probably fishing off it over there. Fishing for giant mosquitoes. Three for 73. Neil pumps that through cover. Shorty's just lost his lost his line a little bit here. So what was a good start, he's now one for 11, one for 12 of his over. For 12 of the over, so that's going to keep him within sight, but unfortunately, it's a big job to maintain it. That's what they've got to do every over, isn't it? Mm. Well, they're still just shy of 100 short, so it's 104 short, 105. Uh, they're not dogs, one's a, a small Shetland pony. Yeah. Oh, we need to get Barry mic'd up. We probably do. I think it was fairly safe from it today because it's probably had its morning breakfast of a postman today. <laughs> it is Sunday. Not many postmen there. Not many postmen on Sunday. Maybe, maybe, maybe Justin <laughs> kept one, uh, called himself a postman on Friday and uh, had him in storage in the shed. i tell you what, you'd want a bit of uh, get up and go on your electric posty scooter when that came out at you. <laughs> <laughs> you'd hope you did turbo boost. <laughs> I hate those things, those new three-wheel postman things. They used to leave just one line across my lawn. Now it looks like I've had a gang of bikies rolling across my lawn. <laughs> Mad cyclists. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gang. if it was cyclists in Lyca, I'd be out there with the with my cricket bat, trying to take a couple out. Hallis goes high. Drahim coming in, he's under it, takes oh, it comfortably. That's a great catch. Just out of a little bit of mayo, smart move conveyancing replay. Yeah. So just unfortunately, the bat turning in his hands a little bit there. Unfortunately, umpire Angus Rathy uh, trying to steal the limelight. Mm. Oh, it's, it's up place, mate. It's just all about them, isn't yeah. it? They like getting in the game. <laughs> Apologies to the penguins out there. That was a joke in case you... Uh, <laughs> yeah. There would have been a few that wouldn't have seen that as a joke. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we love our umpires. We don't have a game without our umpies. We love our penguins. Peter Donovan running the water backwards and forwards with gusto. New batter to the crease. And will the umpires know the new law that the batters cannot cross? Obviously not. I think there sort of seems to be a staggered uptake <laughs> of that law. <laughs> Optional introduction. Sh shout out to Ricky, our resident umpire that seems to visit the Raw with us on Saturday nights. <laughs> Is that Rick Holloway? Yep. Good man. Yep. And oh, oh, I've got very excited there and almost broken the computer. Apologies, Barry. It was one of those awkward decisions. Do I go for the catch? Do I stay back? Half volley. Smart move conveyancing replay will show. Solid knock here. And, yeah, awkward. So I'll tell you what. You know what I do love, Tony? What's that, mate? Looking at the score and having to go in and out of the... Uh, the app every time just to get just to refresh it. Yeah. yeah, it's annoying, isn't no, it? No, I love it. Well, because it eats your battery so much quicker. Well, credit to the Samsung Galaxy El Cheapo $250 version. Battery life is one of its strong points. Really? Yeah. Apart uh, from getting apps that actually sync with it. Yeah, no, well, that's, but that's not the phone's fault. That's generally the app in the case of Cricket Live scoring. Who have we got Ooh. in at the moment? Oh, oh, through him. Big Jack can't get the mitts down to it. Smart move. Swashbuckling. Bang, replay. It's a bit of desperation here from the hip pocket rockets. Step to offside, down on one knee, back in behind square. Got a bit on it too. As the ball returns. Trying to work out who hit that, but uh, not having much luck, so I'll just put that away. Is it uh, Troy Gursky? I would have complained to him. He's standing right in my viewing line here. The broad frame of number 27, Gursky. Yep. Ever present here in the KNR plumbing mobile. <laughs> Hello, Rito. 
great supporter of sport in this town, Paul Reedy. And an MC worth going to the trouble of seeing, eh? Reedy eh? does a great job. Actually, Reedy, if you're listening, do you reckon you could pop out here around about 5 pm? We probably should organise an MC yeah, for the Reedy, presentation. Yeah, around. Local identity. Loves his horse racing. Change of bowling. Alex Sunny Welsh coming on the ball. So, gee, it's handy, isn't it, that they can call on the competition's leading wicket taker right when they need him, the Grammar Blazers. Yeah. 95 runs, hey? 95 off, uh, off seven overs. So, uh, that's, that is the score? Yep. 84, correct? Yep. Oh, this is Dow. Timmy Dow. Luke Neal, reverse sweeping first up. Not afraid to challenge the golden arm. All right. So Sonny Welsh to Tim Dow. Tim Dow, renowned LMS player. Um, not shy to attack a cricket ball. Okay. Got. This is what I like about DDBBL. You get a get a smattering of other cricketers. Is that really Tim Dow? If we had a team list there, we'd probably look at match well, up number. My cricket it? says it's Tim Dow. Okay. Must be right then. <laughs> well, there we go. Singles beverage just taps that one over the bar, but still six runs. Smart move, conveyancing replay. Dow with the Yowie. Was down on one knee. Interesting little uh, setup he's got where he straightens his arms, uh, but plenty of power in that. Good shot. And as you say, got Beveridge was goalkeeper style. They're just topping it over the top. And that'll end that. Alex, <laughs> I love how Alex Welsh responds to being hit for six. I'll just bowl it slower. <laughs> Crafty. That's how they do it in Yorkshire. Learn his craft up there. You can tell by his uh, expressive accent. And so he'd be tuning in on Wednesday nights on 7, mate, at 7.30 like I do and watch Heartbeat. <laughs> it's good. filmed up there. Very good. Um, we've got the live wide Hemi Shah coming in now. Uh, his pads do a great job of filling out his legs for him. <laughs> One of the great men of Toowoomba cricket, Hammy Shah. He, uh, he's probably been over here oh, easily more than a decade now. Came, came to Australia to do his university and uh, just really embraced Australian culture. And while he's still a, a proud, proud Indian man, he, he loves his life in Australia and he set up, uh, set up his family here with wife Namisha and uh, their little boy. I think there's, I could be wrong. I thought there was another, another little Shah on the way as well. He's a competitor, isn't he? Like, like he's one of the he loves it. Politest men around. Like he always says hello. Yep. Mel, just happy to play cricket. Loves it. Just gently glides one out to square leg for the single. So if I can concur with the uh, my cricket, just going to manually go in then go out. Five for ninety-one. My cricket tells me I've jumped the gun. Maybe no ninety. I'm going to give us ninety-two. I reckon that last ball took us to ninety-two. So sticking with it. And the uh, continual footage coming here from Power TV. PTV Gen Channel O. Channel O. I pride myself, Barry, on saying PTV Channel O with passion and gusto. <laughs> well, with footages like that, it's just... Oh, it's a dream. It's like a painting. Remember Jack Russell, the wicketkeeper for England, in the Terry Telling hat? He, uh, he goes around painting, painting cricket grounds. And Does he? Oh, yes. 
we can get Jack Russell over to paint us up a PTV Channel O scene. Wouldn't need to get him over, we just send him this. Just uh, paint this. Jack, make it happen. Hammy chipping into the outfield. Luke Neal not wanting to. Change of bowler, right arm over Kelvin. Is it Cochran? I don't know the big fella, he's from Gimpy Way. Is he Gimpy Way? He's a big lad. First person here this morning. Big lad. Like he's yeah, solid. Big. Yep. Has he had many games for the uh, Kramer Blazers? I'm obviously at least two. Mm, he's played a few. Kevin Cochran. Cochran. Oh, you can always hear the ground shake as he runs in. He's a big unit. We like a big unit here in Toowoomba. 5 for 93, the school book reads. It's good footage here. Bev. Singles beverage just uh, sauntering into the infield. Too many in the outfield, almost costing the no ball. You know what I'd like to see? I'd like to see a no ball for stuffing around too long between balls. I probably should be able to put you on the clock. Wasting yeah, valuable rafty, time. There, just got the arms folded and a little bit of stern look there. Bit of nagging body language there from yeah. umpire Rathy, as opposed to groundsman Rathy and mowing man Rathy. Yeah, yeah. Shot clock in basketball. Uh, Barry, can you arrange said clock for next year's instalment of DDBBL? Luke Neal pumps that down the ground, obviously not interested in uh, a second run there, just sauntering. Is that like 94? Yeah. 5 for 94 off 14.2. Um, Cal Cochran off to a good start. We've got the dulcet tones of Troy Gursky down on the boundary here. Good to see that he's kept himself at a finer third man, Tony, so he's not blocking your view. Yeah, I appreciate that. Hammy gets one around oh, the corner, straight to uh, Buckets Carter. Things just not flowing for the hip pocket rockets, unfortunately. It's no. smart move conveyancing replay will show us. Now we're getting plenty on this. Yeah. I think the mosquitoes are starting to come in with the tide. It's like the wickets and keens usually <laughs> when the tide comes in, isn't it? Well, popping it down the ground. He's got to run with two hands on that bat. It weighs about eight pounds. <laughs> <laughs> that's about the weight of Mel. Yeah, yeah, that's that's his theory. If he can swing a bat that's the same weight as him, surely he's got to got to get some power through it. Bit of responsibility on Luke Shul uh, Luke Neal's shoulders here. Yeah. Excuse me. Gee whiz. Singles Neil. 96. 5 for 96. Off 14.5 overs. Um, yeah, no time to stuff about here. The guys have got to get on with it or perish. You just don't leave anything in the tank, do you? Ah! Now. Hemisha lobs one over the boundary. That's exactly what the hip pocket rockets needed. And that takes them past the 100, 102 of 15 overs. So only 30 balls to go. And requir re requiring 77. 77 of 30 balls, Tony. 77 of 30 balls. Unbelievable. It's a bit, bit of work in this. Well, it's fair to say that there's a fair bit uh, fair to be done. There's Troy Walsh is just... Troy Walsh? Troy Walsh. Mm -hmm. Alex Walsh. Troy Walsh. Mm -hmm. Isn't that that? Hello, Troy Walsh. I, I, well, I quite often call him Chris Welsh because he was another left arm spinner. It's incredibly rude to have two left arm spinners with the same 
surname in in my commentary sphere. It's like Bickle, Bickle and Beveridge. To Zenis just fum fumbling that one, but getting away with it. Alex Welsh comes in, um, and Luke Neal for the second time plays for spin. <laughs> plays for the turning delivery. Yeah. Jesus, commentators, we can be cruel. Can't oh, we? and don't we know better? <laughs> Easy game from behind the microphone. Fair enough. So they're going to double it up. Yes, we've got two. Two off three. That's a, a mini over win for Alex Krish, Tim Welsh. Troy. Troy, sorry. Troy Tim. Troy Welsh, who's actually living in Yapoon Walsh. at the moment. Yapoon. Yapoon, excellent. Owns a good fishing boat, apparently. That's long and strong. Is there a man under it? Four runs. Good work, Russ, just following that trajectory. Smart move conveyancing replay, so I can't see out the side of the media centre. So, uh, it's a good thing. see what happened here. Drahimi oh. and Rex. Oh. Yes. Rex tapped it back in, but Drahimi couldn't continue. They do play a lot of Ted ball for warm up. I would have thought the boys would have been a bit more attuned to that. Neil sides that to Bickle Beverage. Oh, no. If that hits, it would have been out. That's come off Troy. Chris Alex's knee. He's not happy about it either. No, that sounded crisp, didn't it? <laughs> Straight out of the middle. <laughs> uh, clouds rolling in. Tone. Yeah. Temperatures dropping by the minute. Uh, that wouldn't be a day of DDB. We all had a jumper getting sort. <laughs> Five for 109 of 16 overs. We've gone this very well, even if I do say it so myself to get this far into the competition, this deep in the middle of the third biggest Larnina yet. Yeah, we've La we've uh, yeah. There we go. Larnina. Alex Welsh sliding that under Hemishar's bat. Smart move conveyance in replay will show that Homal Shah won't have time to face up just to make sure of his posture and batting. Down the wicket, sneaks oh. underneath. Can't say the eyes would have been on the ball, looks as though uh, he was probably looking at the clouds as well. A little bit skywards there. Oh Heavy. Yeah. And in Mel's defence, though, unfortunately, got to go. Got to go. Media centre wall, just snugly caressing my left shoulder. There's still time, Barry. There's still time for the. Uh, Inevitable dust storm. That was a sight, though, under the lights at Highfield Sports Park. Um, everything turned orange. <laughs> <laughs> that was year one. Was it? No, I think it's, no, no, it was year two. Was it year two? It seems so long ago now. Had COVID. I thought it was raining in year two. I think there was a sh shower blow through with the dust storm. Big cow. <laughs> We've seen it all. We've point. seen some stuff, haven't we? Oh, we've seen some stuff. Really? Oh, I just wonder, if we got insurance for electrocution if it rains here, Barry? Look. Well, when, when Barry was trying to set up in the swamp, I was very, very definite about... Uh, <laughs> electrocution? <laughs> ...preventing electrocution. Uh, shout out to the uh, health and safety folk out there. And whoever the underwriter is. Oh, that's gone. That's the biggest Wowee. shot today. That is a good shot, Lukey Neal. That is a monster. Thirty-seven kilos, ringing wet, and he's just put that nearly. That's nearly the biggest hit of the tournament. That had beautiful sound out of the out of the bat. Was that a BDS bat? No, I don't think so. Oh well, it could have been. Should have been. If it was a blue dog bat, he would have got that over. Calvin Cochran, how's he going to respond? Not oh, bowling on your pads. That's, that's not a uh, not an LBW there, big guy.
All right. Well, that just got a little bit interesting there, didn't it? It was a crisp hit. It was just that a set of great. Mm, just nothing like the sound of leather on Willow. Oh, so crisp. You know, cook a rego. So they amble through for a single. Oh, a bit better lead. than an amble, thank you. I uh, I will amble with haste. <laughs> One hundred and sixteen or sixteen point two. Big Kelvin coming into Luke Neal. And uh, it's probably oh, not yeah. as big as the last one, but... Is the Power TV car... In the the I-20 almost wore it, Baz. Oh, <laughs> Power TV Channel O vehicle. <laughs> it's OK, Barry. I heard we've put in for a requisition next year for a minivan. Yeah. Um, hopefully with upgrades next year, we have requested for a complete van. Bulletproof. <laughs> With coffee machine. Well, I actually now I don't think it's that crazy. We we should have a Winnebago that Baz can just open out the back doors and we can sit in the Winnebago. Absolutely. Yeah. I think it's a great idea. Like but if you come into territory like this with the water you probably have to go to Oh Cochrane might strike back. Oh, here oh, no. We are. no, that's that's the shot of the day. That is bisected four fielders. Bisected and dissected. So yeah, Barry, but if the conditions stay wet, you may have to go for the Mercedes-Benz Unimog. <laughs> Hummer. <laughs> um, you need a step to get on the back, but that's fine. And I don't want to pick at finer details, Barry, but your your headset's around. Like my ears are starting to get sore. That's right. Oh. oh. Well, okay. Yeah, well, see, I'd rather the headset. I do like the headset, but my, my, I think it's the sunglasses and the headset aren't cooperating. Well, there's a bit of that going on, but you do sort of semi-feel like you're professional to a degree, <laughs> or, or at least a little bit like Tom Cruise in you know, oh, yeah. F-18. I, I need some aviators. But. He's up, Goose. <laughs> 126 is the score at the moment. Uh, 126 off 17. The crowd's fever pitched over there with oh. anticipation. Okay. So Walshie to bowl. So Alex, Chris Troy. Chris Got Craig, Troy Walsh. <laughs> From Northern Ireland. <laughs> Northern Ireland now. <laughs> I don't know if you'd be... Alex Walsh from England. Oh, I thought that was a bit of a chuckle. Hopefully my... Uh, my audio is still coming through loud and clear. I've adjusted the headset. Um, Gone through a bit of finer. Try and try and protect the old uh, the old side flaps from any injury. Don't want to don't want to get through a day of commentary and go home with sore ears, <laughs> blisters. How <laughs> <laughs> you get blisters on your ears? <laughs> <laughs> the headset. <laughs> uh, Welsh to Neil. Neil scything it away. Oh, there's another wicket. Alex Welsh, can he stay out of the game? He can't. Smart move, convincing replay. Um, I think that was big Kelvin Cochran there. Um, making that look pretty special. Just caught the outside edge. Stick his outside edge. Luke Neil lost his shape. The hand's going everywhere. Well, I'll tell you what, Alex Walsh, how many that he's got now? A couple? I think that's, well, I think he's coming in today with 18 wickets out of five games. Uh, there's another two, so probably 20 wickets in his six games. So he's had a wonderful tournament. Like we do take the mickey a little bit, but uh, he's, yeah, he's is that Harry Dillon locking up in his classic white shirt and the Gucci shopping bag? Oh, it potentially is. I'm just looking where style is Harry Gillen. As we're getting invaded by a plague of raptors. <laughs> the Valley Raptors. Ah, what I thought was a, uh, a box of uh, candies is now a change of microphone for me. New batteries. Stand by, viewers. 
So Alex Welsh continues to bowl. New batsman on strip. Okay. It's a bit of indecision there. I think there was nearly a single made from the non strikers in. Is that Cameron Moody at the non strikers in? He's got some flowing locks there, so that could be Moods. Am I live, Baz? Right. Live. There's a battery on the floor too, Baz. We'll have to grab later. I don't want the alligators eating the batteries. We've got to be environmentally friendly here. Crikey. Is Baz, oh, uh, I suppose we can't that, get a smart move replay. Is that smart move on the replay there? No. no sorry, Barry. No, six cooked. over cover off the, off, off the spinner. That was uh, quite a shot. Not a bad shot. Insane shot. Is that Charlie Moncada out there, I think? So if it is, Charlie, uh, no Muppet with the bat, has played uh, grade cricket, pretty high grade cricket for Valleys down in Bruce Vegas. Seven for one, three, four. Yeah, look, uh, my cricket isn't agreeing with me, but there was a time when I'd back myself to say my cricket was wrong. So yeah, we do have Moody and Moncada playing together. My cricket's going 133, so I'll. Uh, and it's 17.35 overs. That's uh, interesting. Yeah. We're halfway through the third delivery. Thanks for helping me out there, Tony. That's yeah. all right, mate. Massive help. Oh, that's good. No, I'm just doing what I can when I can. And Barry's it deserted us. He's had enough. Change a bowl of cold pumpkin coming from uh, Cole. from the Tony Anderson end of Highfield Sports Park. Are we on Glover or Harding Oval? This is Harding. Harding. Harding Oval. Harding Oval. Tony Anderson end. But obviously the reference to um, one Robert Bob Harding. A great man of Toowoomba cricket. Um, both of our respective clubs have shared in uh, in Bobby's brilliance. Just bear with me, I'm copping whip from Troy Gursky. What was that, Troy? Absolutely. Been accused of talking rubbish, who would have thought? I think Moody slaps it out and over point cover sort of area. The beautiful hair of Mitchell Short fields the ball. Yes. Yeah, Bobby, absolute legend of uh, the cricket done many great things for, for lots of different people, hasn't he? Oh, he's just a cricket gentleman, absolutely. He'd, like he wrote the history of Toowoomba Cricket mm -hmm. as a publication. I think he's, if I remember correctly, he's a life member of both Railways and Institute or University. Yep, I think you're right. Um, and sort of initiated the Student Bulldog Shield. That I'm not sure whether it's contested at the start of the season currently, but... Uh, a game between railways and the university. We used to play for the Student Bulldog Shield, so it may, may be just up for grabs in the first fixture round we play one another. Spill catch. Yeah, I used to, I used to love seeing Bobby getting around the grounds and, and uh, checking out the action through gentlemen of, uh, of the game in, in our town. Yes, this sort of... Um, marvellous about sport but particularly cricket you give you the opportunity to come across some absolutely terrific people in your travels sure do and hopefully continue to do so so really from here at this point mate it's got to be fours and sixes hasn't it what they go yeah it's there's no other alternative well they take 36 off the next oh, there's the stumps Making way. Cole Tonkin, just you miss I hit. Eight for 137. Uh, one over remaining in the game. So even 36. 36 would still not get us over the line. So I think it's a bit of a, how would they say, a fader complete? <laughs> you and your Latin. <laughs> <laughs> it's your second language, isn't it? <laughs> Is that even Latin? I think so. It's not German. I know a little bit of German. It's not, <laughs> definitely not German. Seven for one thirty eight for one thirty seven. Well I could give you the Australian version and she'll be right, mate. <laughs> okay, done. We're all Dunsky. Tell you what, um, 
There's some big humans in the grammar team and there's some little humans in the hip pocket team, isn't there? I think hip pocket went for an average height. Matt Hallis, Brando Walker. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and Barry. More humour coming from Barry. Um, good running from the boys there. I didn't see yet the draft, but I, there must have been a vertical ruler somewhere around about the hip pocket table where they just had to... <laughs> Meter criteria there that no bigger than Graham, sub, sub 1.6, yeah, no taller than Graham. That was it. The criteria Moody, oh, sugar. We got a camera, Rex, oh, doing, Rexy. doing his best to blow up his hamstrings and quads. Smart move, convincing replay. This will be this will be grand right in front of us. That Moody goes hard and long, Thanks doesn't for that. get it. Well taken. Rex, it was right in front of us too. He great position. Could have done. Russell's concerned ah. for the camera there for a minute. He, you held steady for quite a bit of time, didn't you, Russ? There, and right at the end, decided you might have to take some action to save yourself and the camera. Young Regan Lidke coming into bat here. <laughs> the broom cleaning up. I think she brew. I'm um, sort of thinking it's a bit early, boys. The grand final hasn't played yet. Christian Welsh of the Melbourne Storm doing the job here with the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Troy Gursky just being a pest and coming into slip. Probably having a quiet little word to Regan Lebecki. Um, just uh, muscles, <laughs> muscles that over the top of Christian Alex. Troy or Tim or someone else. Lebecki sounds exotic. Is he born naturalised Australian? <laughs> Portuguese <laughs> import. I'm just wondering. <laughs> is he an import? Brandos Walker just chipping to the outfield. Well, let's go through the bowling figures. Drum, one for 13 off four, well bowled. Jack Carter, number 16 off three, well bowled. Kyle Tonkin, I think that's supposed to be one for 21. Uh, Zach Beveridge, three overs, two for 24. Mitch Small came in with an impact over. Oh, that's run out. No, it's not well run. Uh, Mitch Small impact over of one for 12 off one. Christian, Alex, Troy, Chris, Welsh, three for 22 off three. And Kelvin Cochran. Two overs, number 26. And ball in the air. Oh. oh. Spilt. That will not cost much. Uh, that's game over. The guys get a chance to do a bit of rest and rehab for a good half hour. <laughs> <laughs> Nine for 140. Uh, hip pocket vanquished from this year's tournament. Grammar Blazers. We'll move through the grand final to take on the Valley Raptors. Um, disappointing end for, for Hip Pocket, I think. But um, congratulations. Rex Tooley will clearly be our player of the match with a rampaging 96, I think it was. Um, that's probably the clearly the difference between the two teams. Viewers, thank you for uh, tuning in. And uh, we'll see you in... Uh, we've got a little bit of time. We'll see you in around about 40 minutes for uh, the grand final of DDBBL 2022. This broadcast of the DDBBL on PTV Channel O and Power FM Special Events brought to you by HM Mechanical in association with Ada Care, Smart Move Conveyancing and Livewired Electrical.